It is so brilliant, you won't believe it. It's so simple, it smacked me in the face this Did afternoon. It? OK, tell us then. I'm going to buy a bus. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Mike Graham, he's Mike Parry. You're listening to Two Mics on the warm-up right here on Talk Sport. It's a big day out there as we head down to Singapore for the Chelsea Inter game. Antonio Conte has done his best to wind up Tottenham all week. We'll be hearing from Steve Lillywhite, who's at the game. Plus, I'll be reminding Porky why Joe Root will turn out to have been a great choice for England captain as we take you down to the Oval with John Norman for day three uh, of the rather successful now, uh, for England anyway, third test. 08717 Also coming up, we'll be talking wine boxes uh, coming back into fashion with the self-styled wine bird. And we'll be asking just what exactly is up with Alexis Sanchez. We'll have a one minute moan too. You're listening to the two mics with me, Mike Graham, and Mike Parry on Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and I'm delighted to say it's time to say a very, very good Saturday morning to Mr. Mike a Porky a Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. And a very good morning to you, Mike. Mm. Great to be here. Got yes. so much to talk about we this have. morning. Absolutely. And I think we should start start with my brilliant theory, which you just um, alluded to yes. in your in your opening comments yes. there about uh, Mr. Conte. And what Mr. it's all Conte, about? The mind game player of the of the year so far. I would say so because mm. the way I think it could be happening is this: yeah. Mr. Conte suddenly comes out with the Harry Kane as the best striker in the in the world, if yeah. not the best footballer in yes. the world. Because if you've got the best striker, you can more or less say, "Well, they're the best footballer, yes. can't you?" Yes, exactly. You know, as in Ronaldo. But of course. The best striker in the world deserves to be uh, surrounded by the best players in the world, does he not? Well, that is an absolutely brilliant point. Yeah. Because if Harry Kane now starts to believe he is the best striker in the world, he's saying to himself, well, yeah. hang on, why haven't I got some of the best players yeah. in the why world? Why haven't I got Suarez or Neymar? Or You are absolutely right. Now, also, Mr Kane's agent mm. now must be saying to himself, well, hang on, if the manager of the team that's just won the Premier League yeah. has branded my boy the best player in the world... Yeah. I better go and see Mr. Levy yes. and tell him that you can forget your one hundred thousand pound a week. Yeah. Talk two hundred thousand pound a week, yeah. and we might have a starting yes. point for negotiations. But of course, Harry Kane, as every Tottenham fan will tell you, will be telling his agent, "No, no, 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 no! I don't want you to do that because I want to play at Tottenham all my life. Yeah. Tottenham is my life, yeah. and I want to stay there." This is another very salient point yeah. because much was made of the fact that Harry Kane was the local hero. That's right, the boy who was born round the corner from White Hart right. Lane. Even though there's a picture of him in an Arsenal shirt. Well, that uh, that happens to. Kids when they're growing up, it does. Up, they but go... it's still worth mentioning. But 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 also remember, this comes in the week when another local hero, yes. the most famous local local hero in world football, mm. Wayne Rooney, yeah. did leave his boyhood club, yeah. did go away for thirteen years, yes. and did come back, and has now returned. And boyhood heroes don't necessarily have to pledge their troth to mm. their boyhood club. That's true. If they are ambitious, and also they don't have to do it for the rest of the time. No, exactly. You know, if Tottenham Hotspur were, for example, to lose Harry Kane, yes, or if it, let's say before that happens, they were not to sign anybody decent this summer. Absolutely, Harry Kane is going to be thinking. Hang on a second. What am uh, I doing? Are here? we as good a team as we were last year? Yeah. Are we going to get better? What if somebody comes to Delhi Alley? Yes. And suddenly Deli Ali moves off to Real Madrid or to Barcelona, who've got a bucket load of money yeah. uh, after selling Neymar. Yeah. What happens then? Will Harry Kane then think to himself, actually, maybe I should be thinking of playing for somebody like Real Madrid or Manchester United well, or Arsenal or Chelsea? Well, you see, we're putting all the pieces of the jigsaw together. And the final piece of the jigsaw to me is this. Mm. With all that evidence now stacking up. Yeah. It's obvious as well that Tottenham Hotspur do not want to spend money this summer because of the massive cost, £800 million is estimated now. You don't think they're waiting till the end of the transfer window? No, I don't. No, No, I I, I really don't. Because also, remember, the noises are coming from inside the club that they've got a fantastic academy, that they've got young players there who are going to be brilliant in the future. Yes. There's one young player there. Who have they got coming out of the academy? Little Iniesta. Oh, really? Apparently, yeah. Apparently, Little Iniesta. Little Iniesta. No, no, no. Seriously, (laughs) seriously, they're calling this boy the little Iniesta who's going to come out and he's going to you know uh, smash a hole in the footballing world and oh, they're making yeah. a great thing about that. when's this going to happen then well I don't know oh, really? I, su- I suppose from the start of the season has he been one of these guys that's been successful over the summer with the under 19s England team or the under 20s well or is this... he Spanish I mean I don't know no 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 this, this guy uh, Mauricio Pochettino has yeah. a nickname for Harry Winks Harry Winks yes little Iniesta is okay. what the Tottenham Hotspur head coach likes to call the club's latest young prodigy in private after Barcelona and Spain's midfield maestro and Andreas Iniesta. Yeah. And while Winks claims not to have heard that bandy that, that bandied around Spurs training ground, yeah. he admits it's got a rather nice ring to it, and he says 
We're world class and we can win the league, insists Spurs' own little Iniesta. Now, this to me is all. Well, that's built... all PR rubbish, isn't it? Of course, it? it's PR. It's building up a case of we don't need any more players. Yeah. Every club needs new players in the summer, right? We've got a great academy. They're going to come through. Nobody else can bring players through from the academy. Now, my final piece of, uh, of, of the puzzle in this jigsaw, right? Yes. Is this. All right. If I was Manchester United, despite the fact that we've just bought Lukaku yes. for 75 million, yeah. I'd be reading all the signs and say, do you know what? Mm. Harry Kane would love to come to Manchester well, United. Well, I mean, I mean, interesting enough, I mean, Matt Smith there was saying, why would they want to buy uh, Harry Kane having just bought Romelu Lukaku? Yeah. I'm sorry, Jose Mourinho would like Manchester United to be once again the top club in the world. Of course he would. He would have no problem having both Harry Kane and Romelu Lukaku. Why wouldn't you want both of them? Well, considering that um, Sir Alex Ferguson, during his 21 glorious, no, was it 25 glorious years at Manchester United, uh-huh. always had a dual strike force, didn't yeah. he? He always insisted, of in course. fact, on having two pairs of strikers. Well, he also had amazing strikers to bring on yes, if he wanted to bring them I mean. on in the last 15 minutes that's, of the game. That's what I mean. He always had two pairs of strikers for every game. And you, you, you're so right in what you said with Jose Mourinho. To say I've got Harry Kane and Lukaku as my strike force yeah. and I play them both or I play one or the other or I bring one on as a substitute... A dream world for, for Jose. And Manchester United can afford it. Yeah. Despite the fact they were two years out of the Premier League, yeah. they're commercially... Out of the Champions League. Uh, sorry, out of the Champions League. Yeah. Their commercially driven business now is so huge. Oh, I mean, massive. They are picking up things like hundreds of millions of pounds in sponsorships yeah. from China on brands and things well, we don't even know we're about. We're going over to Singapore shortly to yeah. talk to uh, our good friend Steve Lillywhite, right, yeah. who's there for the Chelsea game against Inter. They've got, in Manchester United's name, yeah. their own noodle company yes. in Singapore. Yes. You know, they've got... They Oh, yeah, sponsors, exactly. A noodle yeah. company that sponsors Manchester United in Singapore. They have, absolutely. Incredibly. So what I want to ask the audience is this. Spurs fans in particular, I love Spurs as a club. I think they're great. I think they're ambitious to build their new ground. I think their supporters are solid people who've stuck with them through some lean years. But yeah. are you suspicious, as I am, you Spurs fans, that actually the money is being saved for the ground? And that's a great future investment, don't get me wrong. Yeah. And that because there is no money to buy players this summer, you are in danger of losing those great players who want to play in great teams. One of them might be Harry Kane. Antonio Conte has definitely wound Spurs up, and I think he's done a great job of it. 08717 yeah. uh, I'm just looking at a little bit more about this uh, lad, Winks. Apparently he's got Spanish grandparents. He has, uh, yeah. he has got a connection with Spain. That's right. Uh, so he could have played for Spain if he wanted to, yeah. but he hasn't really quite burst the bubble of England yet. So we'll see all of, uh, whether that's uh, coming to anything. But the other problem as well yes. uh, for Spurs fans, and you've mentioned this in the past, mm. uh, is basically they have come very close in the last two seasons to winning the Premier they League. They have. However, uh, they have failed at the final That's furlong, right. usually because they didn't have a deep enough squad. That's right. Now, why are they going to have not a deep enough squad for the third year running? Yeah. Why are they not buying more players? That is the question. Uh, uh, honestly, all these questions need answering. And, and I'm not getting on to Mr Levy's back. You know, he's done a brilliant job getting that new ground up. But the problem is, like every... Um, building project in this country since we built the Mersey Tunnel in 1933, yeah. they double in cost as it goes along. Yeah. And this is almost doubled in cost, I'm mm. told, and it's going to be a lot well, more expensive than we thought. that's what those kind thought. of projects end up doing. Yeah. Now, he's getting money coming in from an NFL team that are yeah. going to be playing in London as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's being run in a very, very well-run way, you'd have to mm. say, Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Yes. But it's never been run in the way of being hungry to bring in more players and to spend more money on players. And without doing that, as yeah. people often said, you stand still in the Premier League and you go backwards. You do. You, you can't do. afford to do it anymore. Uh, and your point that if Deli Ali went, yeah. that would seriously weaken the team. It would. And that then actually would might trigger a reaction to Harry Kane's mm. position. Well, it may, may well do. Yeah. Because as we said, world-class players want to play with other world-class yeah. players. Yeah. Look at Alexis Sanchez, world-class player. Exactly. He's getting fed up uh, being buried in Arsenal and not even finishing in the top four. That's right. He wants to go and play for a team that's in the Champions League. Yeah. He wants to go and play for a team that wants to win the Champions League and yeah. Arsenal, frankly, yeah. isn't it. But we also want to know what's going on inside the head of Alexi Sanchez. He's sitting there with his dog, Indeed. with a with a hang dog expression on his face. He is. What is going on there? I totally agree with you. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Loads going on. We're going to talk to Steve Lillywhite very shortly. He's down in Singapore. He's watching the Chelsea Inter game, which gets underway uh, just over an hour from now. Uh, we've been talking about Antonio Conte. I want to hear from you Spurs fans as well, because he's been doing a great job of winding you, Harry Kane, Maurizio Pochettino, and, of course, Mr Daniel Levy up at the same time. Let's go down to a very hot and sticky part of the world, mm. I would imagine. Singapore, uh, where you've been many times, Mr Parry, as I have. Steve mm-hmm. Lillywhite is there. I'd like to say he's reporting on the Chelsea game for us, mm. uh, but actually he went there... Uh, of his own accord. Steve, a very good uh, afternoon to you. A very good morning here. 
<laughs> yeah, good morning, boys, and uh, good afternoon from uh, from basically Singapore. For me, is always like Disney World. Mm. You know, it's uh, it, it's very clean and and, um, and very nice, and and yeah, it's uh, here I am going to see the boys, and you know, it, 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 this is called the International Champions Cup, yeah. and it's a three way competition between Bayern Munich, Inter, and Chelsea. Mm. And it's absolutely meaningless. I went, I went <laughs> to see a game the other night, and it was Inter against Inter against Bayern. And mm. I tell you, it's, uh, there was no atmosphere. It was a little bit sad. But you know, I'll get to see my boys tonight, and that's what yeah. I'm excited about. And is it yeah, kind of absolutely. is it a sellout situation? I mean, was it crowded the game you were at? Oh uh, well, it was a fifty-five thousand. Very, very nice new modern indoor stadium, 55,000 capacity. It had about 22,000. So, um, but apparently the Chelsea Bayern by Munich game that I didn't see was, was pretty full, had about 50,000. So, I'm hoping for uh, Chelsea is certainly the biggest team here of the three playing. Mm. Now, Steve, we've been talking about the so, boss of. Um, yeah. Great stuff, Steve. We've been talking about the boss of your team, uh, Mr. Conte. There are two objectives that a Premier League manager has. One is to make his team the best in the Premier League. The other one is to try and destabilise all the opposition as well as he possibly can. We think he's pulling Spurs apart by, you know, telling the world that Harry Kane, their centre forward, is the best in the world. Because if that's the case, Harry Kane ain't going to want to play for Spurs much longer. Could he be off to other clubs? Maybe Manchester United. Well, I... I think it's very interesting because you did say there are two things the manager must do. Mm. In fact, last season, Conte only did one of them. Mm. He was actually a real gentleman, and, di- and he didn't rise to any of the of the of the silliness that we've been so used to from Jose and that is true. like that. So I found it was a li- it was a little bit out of character, but but he's obviously got the bit between his teeth this season. You know, he sent Kennedy home, and mm. to be honest, that was not the worst thing in the world he did. Mm. He, he's saying this about, um, uh, about you know, about Harry Kane. Yeah. You just, you know, you mustn't trust those baby blue... You don't trust those baby blue eyes of his. Mm. Well they, are, well, they are blue as well, mm. let's not forget. And, I mean, the thing is, mm. you know, whenever a footballer says, I never want to leave this club, uh, they almost inevitably do. Well, yes. Yeah. I think we lost uh, Steve there for we're a moment. We're getting back in a sec. We're getting back for a moment. But, how about uh, this, uh, this great tweet yeah. here from Sean? He yes. says, uh, one for your world map. You know how we like to see where our listeners yep. are. He's listening to the show in the British Embassy in Baghdad. Good God. While watching the cricket. My God. That's Baghdad. Pretty, pretty remarkable, isn't it? Downtown Baghdad used to be the most dangerous place in the world. It's so. not anymore. Yeah, exactly. Not anymore. Yeah. Monty says this. Kane is playing already with world-class players. Mm. Probably better players than United. Mm. Hashtag planks. Well, he may be. That may be the case, Monty, yeah. but it may not be the case forever. No. That is the difference. No. And with Joseph Mourinho and Manchester United's ambitions mm. may perhaps being more ambitious than Tottenham yeah. it may well be that they bring more players and better players in yeah, absolutely. isn't that the situation absolutely and Harry Kane might not be the world's best player this time next year if he has a poor season this season and won't be worth 120 million to Manchester United oh, in I don't 12 think Harry time. Kane's going to get any worse I think Harry, Harry Kane, Kane will is only not going to get any worse but I'm talking about the support around him yes. in that Spurs team because yes. as you quite rightly pointed out mm. Eric Dyer yeah. Deli Alley yeah. Who knows if these players are going to be poached by other clubs who have indeed greater chance of winning trophies than Spurs? Well, somebody calls himself the critique says that if uh, Spurs win nothing this season, mm. Harry Kane and Deli Ali will move on. Yeah, well, they've, left, they've well wasted the right. season. They wasted the season. And ben says now, not being pedantic, MG, but Man United's official noodle partner uh, are in fact from Malaysia, not Singapore. Okay. Well, I didn't say they were from Singapore. I said they were in Singapore. Yes, I think that's if you right. find if you buy Manchester United's official yeah. noodles, uh, they will be available in all parts of Southeast Asia. Indeed. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, of course mm. I do, and you're absolutely right. Now, how about his, this for another question for yes. you while we wait to get Steve Lee White back? Yes. What's going on uh, with Gilfie Sigurdsson? He apparently is not in the right frame of mind to no, play for not. Swansea today. No. So does that mean that Mr. Cooman uh, has been messing around with his mind? No, he hasn't been messing, messing around about with mind. his head. I heard that uh, old, uh, what do we call him, Silphie? 
Gilfie. Gilfie. Gilfie Sigurdsson. Gilfie Sigurdsson. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm Silfie. saying. That's Silfie. No, no, that's Silfie. That's somebody else. Gilfie Sigurdsson. Yeah. I, I hear that he's lying down in a dark room oh, yeah. and playing one particular song, which has become his favourite, uh-huh. which goes... Da, 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 what, Zed da, da, Yes, absolutely, yeah, really? yeah. And what, well, is he going to Watford, then? No, 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 he's not going to Watford. <laughs> but I, I think Gilfie's head has been turned uh, in the direction of the Arroy Blue Mersey, and I expect that deal to be sorted sometime this week. But there's like another that. team that are after him. Is that not the case? And they may have offered more but money than ever. That's Leicester, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, well, I, think, I, think, I think it is. Why would you go to Leicester? I mean, Leicester. Well, are... they're former winners of the Premier League, yeah, which of are. course is not what Everton are. No, that's, I totally agree with yeah. that, and I have the utmost respect for Leicester for what they did. Yeah. However, I don't expect them to be challengers for the Premier League this season. I expect Everton to be in a better place. Yeah. Now, look at this tweet. I don't know who, they, who this guy's talking about. Paul has tweeted this. He says, I see they have let Dumb and Dumber back on the airwaves. Oh, who yeah. do you think he's talking about? Do so you uh, listen to talk radio again? Well, I'm not. Sh- <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. Who who did the breakfast show here this morning? It was that's Matt. very unfair. No, no, I'm not. That's calling very again. unfair. I'm not saying anything about Matt and uh, and Tony. Tony I think Cascarino. Absolutely first that's class. absolutely outrageous. But it's not the regular Saturday morning breakfast show. Perhaps they're talking yeah. about those in absence. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Mark yeah. says this. Don't make a poll out of it. Conte might go off on one. Um, Should we do a poll on Conte? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Is he trying to destabilise Spurs? I think that's a great idea. Eh? What, yes. does he, what does he think he's playing at? Well, no, no. I, th- I think the question in the poll would be, is Mr Conte being very clever at uh, undermining his uh, his rivals? Yes. Well, I think we'll get that sorted out before yes. we go to the news. Yes. The other question I've got for you, right? Yes. Because uh, there's an awful lot of sporting questions this morning. Is what is going on with uh, with Jerry Barton? Do you see that he's complaining that he's not being allowed to play in a charity match for the Grinnell? Well, that's that's uh, because of his 18 disaster. month ban, which has now been yeah. reduced well, to 13 well, why, months. Why does he think he's got some kind of special dispensation? I'm sorry, if you're banned from playing football yeah. because of betting, yeah. then you don't get a special dispensation just because you want to do something for charity. I I, do you? I think to be honest, I think he was making the point that look, you know, you. I could have been given an easement as I only want to try and help money for those who were unfortunately the victims. Yeah, well, that's of, all very well. Uh, you maybe you should have thought of that. Maybe you should just, why don't you just give them some money instead of playing football? Yeah, He's not he, allowed to play football. Yeah, no, well, maybe he will do that. I don't know. Now, listen, as we've been talking about uh, Spurs, for whom Gareth Bale used to play, and as we've been talking about Manchester United, mm. who we think could be a possible bidder for Harry Vale, what about Harry this who? one? Uh, Harry Kane. Yeah, Harry I Kane. You said Harry Vale there for no, a second. No, 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 no. I Harry thought Kane. I misheard. What about this one? Gareth Bale is determined to stay at Real Madrid and will resist any attempt to sell him to Manchester United. That means Mm. that Gareth Bale is the first player in the history of football who has gone to his employers and Mm. said, please don't sell me to Manchester United. (laughs) Why does he want to go to Manchester United? I don't want to go to Manchester United. Every other player in the world does. Yeah, why does he not want to go to Manchester United? He's got some kind of problem with Jose Mourinho, maybe. No, I think he just loves being in Spain. Uh I mean, he's had a fantastic track record of success since he's been at Real Madrid. Well, yeah, he's been injured a lot, though, hasn't he, in the last season or two? Well, he's picked up three Champions League medals. That's not bad, is it? That's not bad. And uh, his kids are settled there. He's taken to the way of life. Perhaps his wife likes it. I don't know. But uh, it says here, that the worry is that Zidane's ref- uh, uh, Zinedine Zidane's refusal to guarantee that Bale would stay at the Spanish champions prompted speculation the Wales star could sign for Manchester United, yeah. who have tried to sign him on two separate occasions. Yes. Well, I mean, it's all going on out there. There's an awful lot mm. of pre-post a season uh, nightmarish stuff going, out, and going, going and, on. And jibe. And, and, and we haven't and even yet. We haven't even yet uh, got to the bottom of what Alexis Sanchez's picture is all about. What I want you to do coming up yes. uh, is to analyse it in your best Fleet Street way as to what this picture means and what it's all about. Which picture? The picture of Alexis Sanchez. Oh, yes, I'll do that. OK, yeah, yeah. And his yeah. dog. And, and, Are you feeling all right? Yeah, and the and the curled lip of sort of well, uh, resentment. Yeah. Oh, poor me. Yeah, yeah, he looks like that guy from one of those spaghetti westerns. Yeah, he does, yeah. I'm not sure whether he's play-acting or not. This is Talk Sport. da 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 That's the real version of the music. That's right, yeah. So we're saying that Alexis Sanchez is looking a bit like one of the villains uh, in one of those spaghetti westerns with we the curled up lip. And he's even got the dog to spit on. That's right. Uh, that uh, old Clint Eastwood used to do. And the you know? blanket wrapped up high around his neck. And the blanket neck. wrapped up high yeah. around his neck. Yeah, maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe he's posing up for, a, for yeah. the next spaghetti western. Yeah. Now, we have uh, got some calls to take. We're going to take them. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you'd like to give the number out again in your uh, unmangled mouthed way. Of course I would. Go Please give it. us a call on 08717 yeah. 22 Phone now. 
Now, now we have also got a poll on the way uh, coming out on the Two Mics Twitter account at the Two Mics. Mm. Antonio Conte is trying hard to wind up Tottenham, uh, and the choice of uh, 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 things you can say for yep. you can vote on is: is he trying to unsettle Harry Kane, or is he just after more money to spend at Chelsea? Mm. Let's talk to Glenn, uh, who's a Spurs fan. Glenn, very good morning to you. Welcome. Morning. How are you? All yeah, right? very yeah, well, very sir. Well, what would you like to say? Good. Well, investment's all about money into the club. The custodians of our club are spending money um, on a new stadium. And the reality is, is they've still got money in the bank to, to actually buy players. But the reality of that is it's all about investment. Right now, uh, we, we cannot compete with Man United, Arsenal, who've got 80-seater 80, 80 stadiums. Yeah. At the moment, it's all about the, the investment in the club. Yes. The custodians of our club at the moment mm. have... Uh, we come second last year. We're one of the best teams that we've ever had over Spurs. The reality is, is we will lose players. We've lost lost players like Bale, Modric in the past, and we will probably lose them in the future. But the reality is, is that we can only spend what we've got. Yes. And we can't compete with the Man United, the Arsenal's. We cannot compete with the Chelsea until we get this stadium in place. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah, but I'm not you know? knocking that. I'm not knocking that, Glenn. What I'm saying is it's remarkable that a team that nearly won the Premier League last season and must push on now to try and win it this season has not signed one uh, player. I agree. It's, it's remarkable that, you know, everybody at yeah. the club's beating the drum for the academy. You know, we've got great academy yeah. players coming through. We've but got then, little but, Iniesta. But, but in reality, we've got three or four players that... that uh, we're bringing forward Omina, you know, we've we've got uh, Edwards. They're, they're, they're young players that, yeah. they, you know, if you don't... One of the things about Chelsea and one of the things about Man United, they're not bringing through these academy players. Spurs are. Yeah. And the reality is, is that we're building a team. And I, I, I get it that we can't compete in buying a £100 million player. I haven't got a problem with that. Well, even bringing in a squad player, a £25 million, £30 million for a squad player. I mean, you're, you're looking to be um, still, uh, 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 guilty. You're guilty, be yeah. guilty in, yeah. And the reality is, it's going to cost £15 million. He couldn't even get in the Spurs side. Yeah, you know, yeah, but hang on. Well, there's, he couldn't there's, there's two couldn't things, then. Glenn, that you've said today, which might worry me slightly if you're a Spurs fan, right? One is we can only pay for, you know, we can only buy players that we can afford to buy. At the moment, that, right. that would suggest that you can't afford to buy any players because no. you haven't bought any. Yeah. Uh, and the second, the yeah, second thing will. you said, hang on, the second thing you said, uh, you know, we can't afford to buy 100 million pound <laughs> players. The big question is, can you afford to keep 100 million pound players? Yes. Well, then, I mean, that, that the, the reality of that is going to happen next year. So I think that if we don't, we something next year we don't because uh, again next year we're going to have a new stadium there's going to be a lot more investment coming into, in, into the club yeah. again if, if in reality that those players can't see that we're going places and again I get that if we don't win the Premier League this year or we don't win some sort of cup and I mean, I'd, love, I'd love to win the Premier League you know it's 50 over 50 years coming but what I'm saying is if, if we don't win that the reality is, we could lose Danielli. We could lose Kane. Yeah. We've got, a, we've, got, mm. we've, got we, we've got, we've got, we've got, we're realists. And again, mm. you know, we've lost Bell, we've lost Mod- Modric, same type of player. But again, we're back here. We've two players of that quality again. So, yeah. You know, yeah, but you're, you're having another, you're having a similar kind of period, aren't you? As when Harry Redknapp got Spurs into the Champions League with Gareth Bale, mm. and yeah. he had some amazing games and well, some incredible think, results, yeah. right? But I, then they fell back down the, the ladder again, and that will happen if Harry yeah. Kane and Deli Ali go, won't it? Yeah, well, again, I think you, I think you might be right, and it, this is the that this is going to be the season. I, I believe as well that Levy will do business in the transfer market. You, you know that he always does it in the last two weeks of the season. That's been his, his game plan for the last five or six seasons. So mm-hmm. I don't think it'd be any different. This okay, season. who do you think he's going to get in though, to... uh, Glenn? We need well. We definitely need. Uh, we've got this German guy who, uh, who we've made a bid on again. Uh, you know, he, he, he's a full back again. Barkley would be perfect for us. I think. I think we'll buy Barkley. Okay. I think he'll drive the price down. Mm-hmm. I honestly believe as well he'll, he'll bring in another midfield player. I think he does need another centre forward. I, I, I believe he needs another centre forward. But again, you know, there's an argument that Son last year. You know, done the business for us. Yeah. Do we mm-hmm. need another? Do we need another centre forward? I don't know. I mean, Jensen yeah. ain't the real deal, but you know, I think that two midfield players and maybe a right back and maybe a young left back. 
And again, if we lose v- Vimmer, which is looking well, there's about like five players case. you're asking for there, yeah. uh, Glenn. So, I mean, they better get so escapes on players. pretty soon. Yes. Uh, Tony's another Spurs fan. Uh, Tony, you've asked the question, uh, who should be replaced and who should be bought? Um, we got Glenn there saying you need about five players. Oh, I disagree. Sorry. I mean, Barkley. Who's he going to take place of? Because he ain't good enough to take place of Deli Alley. No. Uh, the only the only player he could really take place of is Sissoko. So get rid of Sissoko and put Barkley there. But Barkley wants regular football. Yeah. He ain't going to get it at Tottenham. No, and he, he won't get it at Everton, he Tony. He's not good enough to get in the Everton team either. So, exactly. he's, so he's, he's, well, Hang on, about six months ago, you yeah. were saying Barkley for England. Well, well, we've got better players now than Barkley. Oh. So I'm well, not how about has that. he got worse then? Well, I, I'm sorry, he's not kept up with the pace. The thing is, Tony, although you say, you know, who are we going to buy and who do we need to replace... The point is, if you didn't get over the line with the current squad you've got last season, and, and particularly the season before when Leicester won it, then you do need to improve the team. And when you say hang on, hang on, hang on. which we players, well, that's that down to Mr Pochettino. Leicester. Yeah, but we wasn't the only team that couldn't catch Leicester. Yeah. I mean, there was Man City. There, there no, I agree. Leicester I agree, but that doesn't, well. you know, that right. you can't... But we improved on last on the season before because we finished third and we, yeah. we finished second last season. Yeah. So if we improve again... We'll win it. Yeah, but you won't improve again with the current squad because the other right. teams that you're competing well, against are getting younger, better. They're younger, they're gaining experience. They're getting better. They're, they're a, you know, Manchester yeah, City are, are adding better. players on a daily basis. Mate, uh, right. this Conti bloke's gone out and bought uh, that forward uh, to Murata. Costa. Yeah, Murata. Yeah. Yeah. Murata. Yeah. There's no... He might not turn it on the first year. He, he might, might not. not. He might not, but I'll tell you what exactly. he will be doing. He'll be continually... Will. I'll tell you what Conte will do, though, Tony. He'll be continually winding up Tottenham fans mm. and the whole Tottenham organisation. Well, well, we'll let the uh, match, the second one of the season when we beat him at Wembley, then he can eat his words, can't he? Well, that's yeah. a prediction rather than an actual uh, fact, isn't it? So we'll see, Tony. Thank you very much right. indeed yeah. uh, for your view. Uh, keep them coming, please. 08717 uh, How about this from uh, Bert? He says, Sanchez in sad look might be because him and his dog don't win a lot. Don't win a Do lot. I love that. Well like that? done. We like an element of humour uh, on this show. And here's a gooner uh, who yeah. says, uh, if Sanchez wanted to win the Champions League so bad, why didn't he try a bit harder the last three times he was in it with Arsenal? Mm, yeah. uh, and he doesn't believe that he's sick either. No, I don't believe he's sick either. Yeah. I thought it was... Uh, I thought it was rather an instant sort of picture because, it, you know, it, uh, you pull out and you say you're not well. Yeah. But, I mean, when you're one of the fittest people in the world, yes. which is what Premier League footballers are... And also and, and also he's played pretty much every summer, yes. I think, for about the last four yeah. years, isn't he? What is this illness? What, what kind of illness has well, he got? Has he got, you know, shingles or has he got, like, a, a don't know. appendicitis or... I don't know, he's got a sore paw. Exactly, yeah. I mean, or, who could uh, say? I don't know. You know, has he got a headache or, or a backache? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's not quite explained what this illness very is. It's very difficult to know, but it does look like yeah. the beginning of something like a stroke doesn't it? Or a work to rule of some kind. It looks, it looks like I don't want to play for Arsenal anymore, yeah. Tide declaration, exactly. I'm afraid. Exactly. Yeah. Now, here's, here's this from Vision. He says, Spurs are the pure team going into this season. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. No need to make changes. They will win the Premier League. Well, I tell you it's what... a bold statement, I'll tell you what, I, I certainly agree with uh, the ethos of it ain't broke, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. If... If the other clubs stayed still with you and you thought we'll get over the line this time, but yes. Manchester City are going to have so many good players by the time the season starts. Mm. And by the way, they didn't do bad, did they, the other night against Real Madrid? No, indeed. They're beaten 4 1. Although people always say you can't judge anything really at this time of the Madrid? season. Uh, yeah, it was Manchester City. That's right, yeah, yeah. The Real Madrid. Yeah, they and, beat Real Madrid, yeah. yeah um, and well, they've, beaten, they've almost beaten Real Madrid, actually, in the Champions League. That's right, yeah. Don't forget. Yeah. Uh, how about this? The uh, the poll is up, by the way. Antonio Conte is trying hard to wind up Tottenham. Mm. Is he, A, trying to unsettle Harry Kane, mm. or B, after more money to spend? So far, mm. people say uh, he's after more money to spend. Yeah. So it is a bit of a wind-up, basically. Yeah. A lot of people inexplicably are saying, where is the option to call him a clown? Mm. I don't know what they mean by that. <laughs> no eh? idea. Rob says, well, I'd don't... say he's just a clown. And where no. is the clown option? I don't know no. what people are going on about. There's no clown option. It's eh? ridiculous. Don't call people clowns on no, this show. There isn't a clown say. option on this particular no. poll, so no. don't get worked no. up no. about it. I'm going slightly mad. I'm going slightly mad. It finally happened. Happened. Finally happened.
Great show, lads, says um, uh, Haz, who's listening, by the way, another one for the map, listening to the show while on a UN mission in Timbuktu. Well, you're joking. Incredible, right? In Timbuktu? Timbuktu. Utterly Talk fantastic. Timbuktu, I like the sound of that. Do you know what the American equivalent of Timbuktu is? Um, yes, I do know, but I don't think I can say it on the air. It's Oshkosh. Oshkosh Bagosh. Yes, that's yeah. right, yeah. It was a clothing manufacturer, wasn't it? Was it? I, yeah. I, I, there's a place called Oshkosh where, Oshkosh, they, where yeah. they made it, yeah. I think it's out in uh, it's Wisconsin, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. yeah. No, I was there. thinking of another thing that you can't no, say. No, 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 no. I was, I keep it clean. This is a family Here's show. Here's a couple more uh, tweets for you. Kelly yep. says, breaking news, Sanchez has a bad back from carrying Arsenal single-handedly mm. for the past couple of seasons, mm. uh, which I suppose uh, is a little bit harsh. Yep. Uh, Guna says, if Sanchez is so eager to go to Manchester City, let him go to the manager who put him on the bench when he was at Barcelona. Mm. There is a chance that that is, of course, uh, uh, what could happen again, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course it does. Because Pep Guardiola never really fancied him. No. And Paul says, any chance of a birthday shout-out, 28 today. Who's that, Paul? Paul, yeah. 28 today. It's yeah. the start of the rest of your life today, Paul. 28, a great age to be. Two years before you become 30, then you have to think about things and <laughs> get responsible. One year before you become 29. One year before you become 29. Mm. But just get on with it, Paul, and just uh, regard yourself still as irresponsible because you're only 28. It's not a problem. Yes. Now then, I want to talk to you about something. Yeah, OK. Right. Um, how irritated do you get by people who smile all the time? Um, I don't meet that many people that do smile all the time. I get very irritated. But if somebody is smiling constantly, yeah. it usually either means their teeth don't fit very well That's right. or, uh, or they're just a bit insincere. Yeah, people who are smiling all the time mm. are the most insincere of people. I'm sure that's people true. People who are smiling and happy and jumping up and down and beaming with their yeah. white teeth and always appear to be happy are the most insincere and you've although, got a problem. Although you're somebody who has a slightly interesting take on this because you yeah. believe anyone who pretends to be actually happy yeah. uh, or who even is happy yeah. is actually doing their life the wrong way round. Because well, you don't believe in being happy, do you? I, well, I think they're disturbed if they if they have to put over this image of I'm I'm happy all the time. But anyway, the, the, where it most manifests itself is uh, in restaurants. Oh, yeah. When the person who is taking your order and smiling and beaming and happy he actually loathes you. Well, no, but I don't mind that. I'd rather somebody in a restaurant who was actually serving me yeah. uh, was going to say to me, hello, mm. how are you? Mm. Have a nice day. I'm very happy to see you. Sorry, rather than somebody... Uh, my name is... Uh, Manuel. Manuel. No, sorry, yeah. I wasn't trying to do Manuel. Yeah. It just kind of came out like that. Yeah. I'll tell you a story yesterday, right? I took mm. the kids over to this park near Eastbourne right. to do a bit of skating and yeah. take dog for a walk. Right? Mm. We went for something to eat after. a little cafe there. Lovely. Walked in, mm. and there's a very kind of... Uh, stony-faced young man behind mm. the counter. Mm. And I said, um, you know, I'd quite like to have a cappuccino, please, your code of takeaway, yes, mm. takeaway, thank you. And I said to the kids, you want, they wanted something to eat. Mm. And they had a whole menu up on the board above, yes. you know. And they said, uh, I said, my youngest said, oh, can I have a tuna and, uh, and a sweet corn sandwich, please? Yes. And, uh, and the other one said, yeah, he'd like a cheese and ham. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I'm yeah. oh, sorry, we're not making sandwiches at the moment. Mm. This is about two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. I said, sorry, you're not making sandwiches. Mm. Um, what, any particular reason? Yeah. No, we just don't have any sandwiches. And yeah. I said, OK, well, what sort of food do you have? Yes. Well, we've got some chips, mm. and um, uh, we can do your bacon and egg uh, sandwich. Mm. I said, so, well, you can make a bacon and egg sandwich, you can't make but a you're drop. not making sandwiches. Yeah. I had to leave. Mm. I literally had to walk out. Did you get your cappuccino? I got my cappuccino. I yeah. said to the kids, look, you go, I gave them 20 quid. I said, mm. look, you get something to eat. Mm. Mm. I'm going to have to walk away. Yes, that's because right. Because otherwise I was going to get this guy around the throat. Yeah, thump him. And go, what is wrong with you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's what I don't... I'd rather have somebody giving me an insincere smile. Yeah, exactly. And saying... Thank you. Have a nice day. That's right. Absolutely. Do you know what well, I mean? well, you're absolutely right. That's the opposite to this report yeah. that I've seen here. Anyone has ever looked at the corporately mandated cheeriness of service sector staff yeah. and wondered what lay behind it? Psychologists have the answer. Being forced to smile all day makes employees in, inwardly aggressive, <laughs> cynical and exhausted. They actually hate you. Yes. Uh, University of East London report investigated the hidden costs of emotional labour, and that's what it's called, OK? Organisations think customers will be happier and connected better if employees act nice and smile. But actually... It's the most stressful experience to load upon an employee. I'm sure it is. When I go grocery shopping, I see these women spending many hours trying to smile, and I wonder what they think. So she she reviewed all the scientific literature. This is a a lady called uh, Milda... Perminieni from <laughs> you know that's her name Perminieni. Is that in this country she's been doing this study? Yeah, yeah, University of East London. Because you won't see because you won't see that many people smiling no. here. No, I won't. mean what I do notice is, for example, if you go into one of the yeah. coffee shops, of which there are many, yes. but I'm going to say Pret just because it happened to be one. Yes. I was in one the other day, yeah. and there were two women in there. One mm. of them was cleaning the floor, mm. and she was terribly nice. Yeah, that's so, right, Hello, yeah. sir. How are you? Yeah. And I was a bit thrown thrown by it, actually because yeah, exactly. she, she was being so pleasant. Yeah. That you're just not used to that. Well, here. this sums it all up. Yeah. Adjusting your appearance and gestures and facial expressions without doing anything to your emotional state mm. creates emotional dissonance which can, which can drive you mad. 
Really? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. When, you know, when you're having a poor day and a bad day and you, you know, your kids are bringing you problems yeah, yeah. and the bills have been piling yeah. onto your doormat, but you've got to go out and smile at yes. everybody all the time. Yeah, well, I, well, that is only specifically for the restaurant business, though, really, Well, it's it? not really. You know, sometimes you go to a main station in London and, yeah. and elsewhere, York, Durham, yeah. and they have all these people who have to entice people onto the tourist buses oh, for yeah. a tour of the city. Yes. I always think about them. They're mm. always saying, hello, how are yeah. you? All smiling and all that. But that's OK, isn't it? I mean, oh, if you don't dreadful. want to do that kind of job, then... Mm. Just don't do it, surely. Dreadful, honestly. I can't bear people who are happy all the time. Don't they know the realities of life are that uh, you shouldn't be happy all the time? Because, as this research report reveals from the University of East London, which is just round the corner here from Talksport Towers, yes. by the way, so it's very close to home. Isn't that the place that's mad? full of um, sort of left wing maniacs who are always going out on strike? Well, most of the uh, higher education system in this country is full of left wing. The only reason I say that is, 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 is the guy, yeah, there's a famous professor there mm. who was always leading the march, you know, of the students. <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah. I believe he's the father in law <laughs> of one of the senior management people here. Oh, is he? I believe so. Is he? Yeah, I don't oh, want to get into well, too, per, too many personal stories. I tell you what, I did read. Mm. You know the uh, the great row about, uh, which is the surface now, about student um, grants. No, oh, yeah. uh, not student grants, student oh, loans. Student debt. Student, student debt. Student oh, yeah, loans. because Corbyn's going to wipe it all out. Well, look, you know, I mean, that was a political trick, and both sides play political tricks. Sure. I haven't got a problem with that. Yeah. But what makes me laugh is I saw a report last night in one of my educational journals oh, saying yeah. that there are literally thousands of university lecturers yeah. who earn over 150000 yeah, pounds a year. Sure, there are. Well, hang on. Couldn't they perhaps take a lower wage and help with the student debt? <laughs> because most lecturers in this country, yeah. certainly if it, the system's the same as it was when I was at the University of the Trent, yeah. only, work about six, the of the Trent. <laughs> only work about 16 <laughs> hours a week anyway. And only about 16 weeks a year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, anyway, yeah. listen, there's been it's a been wicket. about three months in, on holiday. <laughs> there's been a wicket in the cricket. John Norman is at the Oval. John. Mm. Yeah, finally, after uh, nearly an hour of play, and when you consider how quickly the wickets tumbled yesterday gives you some idea of how conditions here have eased but England have struck for the first time this morning 161 for 9 South Africa at the tail end at Morning Morkel which usually comes in at number 11 uh, has just been caught by Alistair Cook at first slip from the bowling of Jimmy Anderson. Uh, Vernon Philander, who spent the night uh, in the hospital, is walking gingerly to the crease. Uh, he wasn't expected to bat yesterday, but he bats today. Um, uh, despite uh, many stories surrounding how ill he is, he was playing football before the game, so uh, he can't be that bad. Uh, Bavuma is still there, 48 not out. Philander yet to face the ball. Uh, South Africa have lost their first wicket of the morning, though. 161 for nine. Tremendous stuff. Long mm. may it continue. John Norman, thank you very much indeed. Similarly, actually, talking of, uh, of restaurant staff and all that, <laughs> yeah, did you see yeah. that story, uh, which was also in East London? It was yeah. over in Shoreditch, which yes. is, of course, very trendy. Yes. We'll be talking about wine boxes, which are coming back in Excellent. a little bit later on, yeah. uh, with a woman who calls herself the wine bird. The wine Before bird. anybody starts accusing mm. of sexism, that's yeah. her own name right. for herself, right? Okay. Did you see that story where um, some company uh, which runs a bunch of bars got into right. terrible trouble yeah. because they are advertised for oh, good looking, extremely uh, attractive waiting staff that's right yeah 10 pounds an hour yeah and everybody went mad mm. and said oh you can't do that mm. you can't actually can't you say that? that you want only attractive people uh, working for you yeah why, well, why, well, why can't you I, can't, I, can't, I, I just don't understand it i just mm. can't understand why you can't say i want the presentation of my employees to be absolutely you know precise and 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 better than anybody else yeah. and you, you don't do that by employing people who have uh what should i say um well, well, you want people with a pleasant and f- and friendly demeanour, don't you? Here's what they actually ask for. Yes. A minimum of one year uh, waitress or waiting experience, ability yep. to easily and quickly handle cash and card payments, yep. ability to upsell, promoting the best drinks and maximising customer spend, yes. which is where when people go, yeah. oh, have you tried one of these? Why don't you have right, a shot yeah. of this with your beer? Yeah, 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 yeah. A, bit of, a fun, lively and positive attitude. Yep. Physical attractiveness is unfortunately necessary mm. for this role. Well, of course it Impeccable is. Impeccable customer service, fluent English. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, totally agree. I don't see agree. what's wrong with any of that. I don't see anything wrong with it at all. I mean, you know, you want to present an image for your company. If you if you design a car and you want that car to sell in millions, yeah. you design an attractive car. Yes. You don't design an ugly car. No. Because an ugly car will not be sold to people. No, Because exactly. people say, I don't want to be associated with anything less than a very good-looking car. Yeah, right. Right? I mean, there are some people that like to drive around in ugly cars, because yeah. obviously there are some people driving around in ugly yeah, cars, because they have no taste. Yeah, that's right. But the bottom line is, I mm. mean, if you're running a business, mm. Mm. you know, up to a point... Surely, if it's a customer-based business yeah. where people have to talk to directly members of the public, yeah. you want to be yeah. able to dictate what sort of people are doing that job, don't you? Yeah, it's absolutely true that lots of people uh, have been flying on um, airlines that have 
attractive um, cabin staff. Cabin without, crew. Cabin crew, yeah. without without a shadow of a doubt. Well, you'd rather do that than get on the plane where they drag you off kicking and yeah, screaming exactly. because they've exactly. apparently overbooked it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, the reason I ever first ever started um, flying British Airways, yeah. you know, 35 years ago perhaps, is because I thought the ladies in the cabin staff looked so glamorous in the uniforms, which had been designed by some guy called... Was it... Um, well, it was the it was that great designer in the eighties. Uh, well, not Pierre Cardin. No, it wasn't Pierre Cardin. It was an English guy, wasn't it? Smith. Paul Smith. Paul Smith. Yeah. Paul Smith. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, you know, I will feel very pleasant luxuriating in my business class seat. Will you? Yes. Um, looking at people who are pleasant rather than luxuriating in an economy seat on somebody else's airline with. Not such attractive people, really? you see what I mean? I'm not quite sure what point you're making, <laughs> no, no, but no. we've got to go to the news now anyway, exactly, so unfortunately yeah. we can't elaborate on it. <laughs> Amazing voice, huh? Fantastic. Kate Bush. Are you a big fan of Kate Bush? Oh, huge fan. I, really? think, she, I think she was 19 when she mm. uh, wrote and uh, produced and uh, she sang. She was discovered by a member of Pink Floyd, I think, was she? she? Yeah. Well, the drummer, I think, wasn't it? Gilmore, uh, was it? Dave yeah, Gilmore? Dave Gilmore, yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, but, I mean, when she, you know, the first time you saw her on Top of the Pops, I mean, yeah. this witch of a woman, you yeah. know, this fantastic hair mm. and, you know, the, the, the dance moves that yeah. she had and the pointed fingers and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Just absolutely beautiful. And uh, she's 59 tomorrow. Is she? So she's had 40 brilliant years. Many happy returns. When she, last year, had a series of live concerts, I think there was some of the highest black market prices yeah. for tickets for that because show. Because she hadn't played for decades, no, had she? That's, that's right. she was actually terrified of going on the stage, I think. Was she? That was the reason she, she got gave. stage fright. She got she? stage mm. fright massively. Mm. And also just hated the idea of being in front of crowds. Yes. The whole kind of pop star yep. thing. She went and basically lived as a recluse uh, in a, in I a country house. I think she had an house. island. I think she, she bought yeah, some I mean, kind she of went, an island. She basically went and hid away. Yeah, that's right. Um, but what a remarkable woman. And, Quite and remarkable. In fact, I watched a documentary about her not long ago. Yes. On BBC Four, where they right. do those really good music yes, documentaries. Yes, that's right, yeah. And I hadn't really thought of her as a kind of musical genius. Yes. I have to say, because I was never a massive fan no. of Kate Bush. I never owned any of her albums. I never bought any of her stuff. No. I knew what I heard on Top of the Pops. Mm. But she really was a, a musical genius. And yes. is. Yes, know. that's right. I and mean, I have to say, she's... she's um, not gone up in my estimation because no. that's a stupid thing to say, but yeah. but I, I have a lot more respect for her as a musician yeah. and as a, as an artist that's now right. than I ever had. She, I mean, she composed all her songs on a piano, didn't yeah. she? And then she got her friends in to um, mm. you know try it out on a ukulele and well, all that kind of stuff. A very, she just she is was. a very talented woman, absolutely very Remarkable. talented in, indeed. Remarkable. Now, unlike you, yeah. uh, she got most things right, according to the Goose and yes. several other people. Yes. Roland Klein in the eighties and Paul Costello in the nineties designed the BA uniforms. I knew it was a Paul, Paul Costello. See, I've never That's heard of him. Uh, yeah, I know all about Paul. I know Paul. Paul Smith is. Funny enough, Paul, right? Yeah. So, Costello, of course, the bar that we always use in was. America was Costello's. Yes. We're going to America in September. We are. Hope that, uh, We're going to go. There's a bar there now in the exact same spot yeah. called the Overlook Bar. Terrible. So, we'll have to go in there and uh, let's, well, we will. Uh, do some video footage. I yeah, think. do some reminiscing in yeah. there. Because right. I mean, an amazing number of people on, on Twitter and on Facebook mm. who say, oh, we'll go to New York. Is Costello yeah. still open? We want to go and see it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Unfortunately, it's not, but no. uh, but there'll be something else there. And don't worry, it'll be a lot of fun. Yes. Now, I want to talk to Liverpool fans, who we always get on very well with on this show. Yes, indeed. Because you will have seen the Neymar punch-up. Uh, uh, yeah, the yesterday. training ground bust-up, Training as ground bust-up, right? yeah. Now, to be honest, uh, although, you know, people got very excited about it, to be perfectly honest, I think Tony Cascarino, if he was still here, would tell you that happens twice a week in training. You know what I mean? Well, people have Guys always said, I mean, ex-footballers that, play, that, that, that work here and that I've sort yes. of spoken to mm. always say that mm. actually, if you're not having training ground bust-ups, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're doing something wrong. That's right. You know, so, it happened in the Lions uh, tour as well. Yes, it uh, did, You yeah. know, before the final game, there mm. was a bit of a punch-up in that's the training. Right. You know, you want there to be a bit of tension, don't that, you? That's right. Now, this this happened, of course, while the team's on pre-season tour. OK, yeah. so people are saying, well, you know, well, it's just a bit of early season tension I think but anyway the reason I am uh, bringing this up okay is because 
an interpretation is being made on Merseyside that that was very, very bad news for Liverpool. Why? Well, because if Neymar is having a punch-up with his colleagues at Barcelona, yes, right? right, and there is tremendous speculation around the world yeah. that he may be moving on to PSG yes. with a massive bid of, you know, something like 160 million Well, it's funny, pounds. isn't it? Because everyone at PSG says it's going to happen. Yeah. Everybody at Barcelona says it's not going to happen. Yes. They can't both be right. No, they can't both be right. Mm. And the reason that it's, uh, the, the fires are being stoked is because Neymar has made it clear that when you play in such a good forward line as the one he plays in, you want to actually step out of the shadows of Lionel Messi and, and Suarez and you want to be your own man, you yeah. know what I mean? And, mm. and, and he could be his own man if he goes to another club. Yes. So it's not necessarily money, it's because he wants to have a crack himself at, at being called the world's best footballer. Yes, exactly. And, 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 and win the Ballon d'Or. I, I mean, we were talking earlier in the show about Harry yeah. Kane wanting to be surrounded by world-class players. Exactly. Neymar is, of course, surrounded by world-class players. Yes. But, but he has said it, uh, or at least said through friends, yes. that if he goes to PSG, that's he right. will want to be surrounded by world-class players there as well. Yes, that's absolutely right. Of course he will. Mm. Now, the... Uh, the consequence of that, uh, according to some people I was speaking to last night on Merseyside, is that if that happens, then Philippe uh, Coutinho yes. will be even more of a prime target for Barcelona. Well, and they'll have a lot of money to spend, won't and, they? And who will have a, tr- a huge amount mm. of money to spend. Yeah. And money will be no object. It'll be then whether or not Coutinho wants to go. And are there indications that Coutinho is keen on a move to Barcelona? Well, the answer to that is yeah. anybody would be, wouldn't they? Well, Danny Murphy said just the other day yes. on this very station that mm. if Liverpool got offered £80 million yeah. rather than the 120 that they're looking for, yeah. they should take it. Yeah, exactly. And they should actually move him on. Yeah, that's He's right. the only guy I've heard saying that they should get rid of him. Everybody else says they should keep him. Well, I think Danny, in fairness, didn't say they should get rid of him. I think Danny says there's a, t- well, a tipping point. And what, that I'm tipping point is, is that, yeah. Yeah, but what I'm saying is many yeah. other pundits have said yeah. don't let him go because Liverpool can't afford to lose him. That's right. Danny's well, saying they can afford to lose yeah. him if they get £80 million. Yeah, now bear in mind that every club in the world is a selling club now, including Manchester United yeah. and including Real Madrid. Well, I mean, in a way, every club yeah. has always been a yeah. selling club. Well, yes, ex- except that a selling club used to be a derogatory term for a club that was a small club yeah. that had to sell its players to a bigger sure. club. It's not now. No, I don't believe so. No, what it is now is that everybody's got a lot of money and, and what suits one coach might not suit another, yeah. so every club's a selling club. Exactly. Now, if that's the case and Coutinho goes, how will the Liverpool fans feel? I would like them to give us a call, please. Would you? We are on 087172334. My view has always been on any player, and you know, I'll, I'll use Ross Barkley as an example. If a player wants to get away, yeah. he should go. He should. Because you don't want a player at your club who is only sort of reluctantly putting the shirt on or half heartedly putting the shirt yeah. on, who thinks that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. Yes, what well, you or, think like Alexis Sanchez, maybe. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah I agree. Indeed. But I mean, I wonder how Liverpool fans feel about it. Do they think that Coutinho is desperately necessary to their bid to become, you know, uh, realistic Premier League title contenders? Yeah. Or do you just get on with life like you have to? Oh eight seven one seven double two double three double four is the number we require you to call us on. Of course, uh, Liverpool uh, have got the problem with Coutinho. Uh, Danny Murphy says he thinks they should sell. Uh, mm. Mr. Parry says uh, he, it's the quandary now getting worse because yes. Neymar looks a little bit more and more unsettled the more we look at Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, so do give us a call. Oh eight seven one seven double two double three a double four. Here coming up. Oh, well, here's one from David before we go to Eleanor Mills from yes. the Sunday Times. He says I had a lecturer at university who would only do group tutorials in pubs mm. over a couple of pints. Yeah. He was. The best lecture I ever had. Yeah, that's I got sounds... a first class degree. Excellent, well done. That's very mm. relaxed and a, a really good way to do it. That's it what is. I'd say. Absolutely right. Yeah. Now, uh, time to talk about the Sunday Times and yes. what's in it. Uh, yes. Eleanor Mills is editorial director, of course, uh, as well as being editor of the magazine. Eleanor, very good morning to you, or very good afternoon to you, I should say. Yeah, hello. How, how are you both? We're very, very well, well indeed. Thank we you. We are very well. The, the, the summer marches on, even though it doesn't look like it very much out there. I, I, <laughs> I note that you've chosen a good weekend to be working rather than off glamping or something like that. Oh, I know, no, it's, it's really horrible here. My, I'm looking after my nieces because my brother's gone to play uh, cricket and oh, I think right. they're about to get rained off. OK, and you've Ooh. got some cricket going on in the magazine this week, haven't you? We have. We've got a brilliant piece by Simon Barnes, mm. who, of course, was the old uh, sports writer for The Times. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he writes for us quite a lot now. And he has written a brilliant piece about um, the Oval, which is hosting its 100th test this weekend. Mm. And so he looks back at 136 years of cricketing history, what he calls England's scruffiest but most vibrant um, ground. Mm. It's brilliant. Um, does, does, he talk about, a... does he talk about the wildlife there as well? Because, of course, Simon is an expert on wildlife, isn't he? 
Actually, I managed to keep him off the, the nature this time. Excellent. Why would you want wildlife in a cricket ground? Well, because of, <laughs> because Simon will have started his you know his interest in cricket at some little village cricket ground, won't he? And he'll have heard well, the he's warbling. Making, he's making this up now. The warbling he? of the birds in the trees and all that. God. But obviously, he's actually, gone on to much greater things. Mm. Actually, Simon grew up in Streatham, School and Clapham <laughs> Junction. <laughs> oh, right, he okay. in Brixton, yeah. and then he's has a girlfriend in Tulse Hill. <laughs> oh, and right. he absolutely loved going to the Oval. He used to kind of crawl, he used to go up there after school. Oh, and I see. He says that, um, yeah, yeah. He's, he's talking about 1973 and the big series against the West Indies and how that was a really defining mm. moment. Well, I have to say... As usual, as usual of course, Porky's weaved no. a wonderful no, no, tapestry no, no. of lies around well, this guy's young uh, childhood. Well, we've all lived long <laughs> enough to know that Brixton's been a pretty interesting little village over the years. It certainly has. Yeah, it's not known, not known yeah. for its wildlife, though, no. particularly. <laughs> well, it depends no, what think, sort of wildlife you're talking about. I think the wildlife mm. came later. Yes, 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 indeed. The and love got, of sport began early. And you got John Major, who's a massive cricket fan, of course, and Trevor yeah. McDonald talking as well. Absolutely. I'm talking about... The, John Major says the Oval's where I went on my own as a boy, age yeah. 10. He'd walk up there from his home in Brixton with a packet of sandwiches and a bottle of Tizer. Right. Yeah. And it, he said he also went there on the day he lost the election in 1997. Ah, yes. where yeah. I... Where I broke my father's gold stopwatch trying to time an on drive from Peter May. I remember it very, he, yeah. I remember it very well, Alan. It was the day after the election, wasn't it? And he made the famous quote as he was there. He said, "When the curtain comes down, it's time to get off the stage." Yeah. And he had a pair of dark um, sunglasses on, and yeah. that, that was the end of his political career. Sure. Yeah. And does he yeah. still hang? Well, funnily enough, we were driving not far from there last weekend, Porky, and uh, we were recounting the, the times we'd used to go to the Kennington Tandoori to spot John Major. <laughs> does he still go there, or is it is, is it even still there? Oh, I think he probably does. I don't know if it's still there, but I'm sure if it does, he still goes there. He's that kind of guy, isn't he? Yeah. He, he, he is a, a very nice guy to all intents and purposes. Now, I'm really interested in the Boy George uh, stuff you've got on it this week because when I was a correspondent in um, New York, I went yep. up to Canada to do the um, Boy George's band, what were they called, Culture Club. Culture their, Club. Their first overseas tour to America and it was so explosive. It, you know, in the first night, it revealed yeah. that Boy George and, and his drummer were having a bit of a fling together. I mean, it, was, it was an amazing uh, unfolding of a story. He talked about that, actually, in this interview, because he, he talked about George Michael and how he cried when George Michael died, yeah. but how he and George were never friends. They were always rivals. And they used to have big fights because, of course, Boy George was very open about being kind of gay and a drag yeah. queen and being out. Yeah. And George Michael was really not, partly because he was kind of such a heartthrob. Mm. And I think the two of them used to argue about it quite a lot. And so he talked a lot about those days and about George and how they kind of kept trying to become friends, but it just didn't really work. No. It's, a, it's a really it's a good piece also about how Boy George just turned himself around. Mm-hmm. Of course, he went, you know, went to prison for a bit. It yep. was all looking pretty bad. And now he's a huge hero in Australia because yeah. he's done The Voice down there and the same in America. Mm. And he's really turned his life around. So it's kind of a, a good tale of redemption. Yes, it really is. And so the line, you're my lover, not my rival, was obviously not written about George Michael then, was it? <laughs> Well, who knows? <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. But, History does not reveal. Yeah, but but no, you're absolutely right. I mean, that was a, a period when people didn't know whether to kind of come out, stay in, or anything else. And uh, yeah. and, and, and and as you quite rightly say, do you remember the um, do you remember the Christmas single? You know, last year I gave you my heart gave and my all heart. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, last Christmas. Last called. Christmas. Yeah, that's right. And careless whisper. And, and all careless that. whisper. You- they were, they were, for me, I mean, I'm a yeah. real kind of, I was a teen in the 80s. They were like the, the first, the first snog was kind of had to George Michael and you always kind of hoped it was George Michael rather than yeah, the sure. sporty boy it really was. Sure, it? but on this particular tour, it was in Canada and John Moss, who was the drummer, wasn't he? He threw he yeah. was his, well, he was his boyfriend, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's right. And yeah. he, you know, demanded more attention and all this kind of stuff. So it really was an unravelling tale. Yeah. And as you quite rightly yeah. say now, Boy George has become the respectable face of what he used to be. Do you know how respectable yeah. he is now? How respectable? He follows me on Twitter. Oh, do really? He does. Really? Yeah, he yeah, does. Yeah. And well. he's a former Hampstedite, of course, as well. I used to see him in the NatWest Bank in there. Terribly tall. Yeah. Very much taller guy. Oh, very than big think. bloke. About six foot yeah. four. Oh, you wouldn't. No, mi- no, he's he's huge. I heard him sing actually a cappella at a charity do a couple yeah. of years ago. He was yeah. absolutely brilliant. He did Karma Chameleon. It's one of my like all time favourite yeah, moments. Indeed. Yeah. That's great. And the video that goes with it on mm. the uh, the riverboat. Indeed. On the Mississippi. Yeah. Now, now, yeah. now then, are people going around blowing each other away in North Korea. <laughs> That's a yeah. bit one way of putting it. Yeah, well, we've got we've actually got a really timely piece. It's one of those things on the magazine. You never know if you're going to be, you know, bang on the money on the Sunday or not. But mm. actually, this weekend, our cover story is called Femme Fatale, and it's about the women who killed the, the half-brother of the North Korean leader. Oh, at the airport. And, mm. 
yeah, at the airport. And we've got the kind of inside story of that. They're, we're calling it Kim's Baby Face Killers. Yeah. But it's really like a kind of Game of Thrones in North Korea. We've got it Game of Thrones North Korea style. And yeah. when you look back at all the people that Kim Jong-un has had kind of wiped out mm. and that his father had wiped out and all those people in the family who have just gone, it really is like something out of the Starks and the mm. Lannisters. Yeah, mm. it's a yeah. Strong, extraordinary story. Amazing place, actually. I'd love to go down there. I keep trying to persuade Paul that we should go on a mission mm. to try and find out what <laughs> North Korea is all about. Wait, you and you know what's he called? Dennis Compton, the uh, yeah, um, yeah the basketball. Yeah, player. Dennis Rodman. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Dennis yeah. Rodman. Absolutely yeah. right. Mm. Thank you very much indeed, Eleanor. Listen, have a great weekend, Eleanor Mills, editorial Thanks director of the Sunday Times. Yeah. Another fabulous package to pick up by indeed. the sounds of it. Mm. A couple of quick tweets for you. Uh, David says he's listening from the countryside in Lower Chittering, uh, one hour from Perth, Australia. Wow! Just getting the fire going. I may have been there. Uh, you may have been. Yeah, because I've been to Perth and yeah. I went to a lot of places around Perth. I was Did there you? for about a week. Yeah. Okay, very, well, thanks, very, thanks for letting us know. Maybe somebody yeah. will remember if you were actually there or not <laughs> yeah, and they right, can yeah. tell you. Yeah, uh, yeah. And Lady Laura says, listening to the two mics whilst on our way to the pub for lunch for Mummy Sue's birthday. Oh, yeah. Can you please say happy birthday to Mummy Sue? Mummy Sue, how old yeah. is she? It doesn't say how old okay. she is. Well, I want to know. Why do you yeah. need to know how old she is? Well, I, you know, I like to know if she's a lady of a certain age or whether she's in her thirties. I always, you know. Well, Lady Laura is mm. a woman who spends most of her time mm. at home, um, yes. uh, stripping the paint off the walls. Oh right, right, yeah. uh, and uh, generally improving life. And she, yeah. I would say, is a woman uh, in her mid twenties. Okay, yeah. So her mother's yeah. probably not in her thirties. No, probably in her fifties or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, very very happy birthday to is it Mummy Sue? Mummy Sue. Yeah. Now listen, not to, Peggy Sue. Not Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. Don't sing. That. You know, I, I I was reading something up on Buddy Holly recently, oh, yeah. and um, you know he died in that plane crash, sadly, with uh, two members of his group. Well, with the whole cricket uh, scene, scene well, most really, of them, wasn't yeah, it? got wiped out. Yeah, but you know, in his will, he such, had no such a fine way of putting it. Well, yeah, unfortunately, it's a bit <laughs> sad. But the reason they were on the road was because mm. they had to keep earning more money because yeah. their promoter said we're broke. Yeah, and they kept saying, "Why are they broke? <laughs> Why are we broke?" And apparently the promoter was being blackmailed by the mob. Really? Yeah. Uh, all these amazing stories. You know, why were they flying around in, in sub-zero temperatures yeah. in December, I right. think it was. You know, yeah. and they should have been resting for Christmas mm. and all that kind of stuff. I know. And, and it came out years later that, you know, the, the mob had a bit of a stranglehold on the music business in Oh, they did, days. yes. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, and, mm. and he was paying all the money to, you know, sort of... You, you guys, know, guys with hooked noses, and uh, all hooked that. noses, yeah. and, and not very good. But yeah. talking about talking about music, right? Did you ever have a uh, an iPod? I did have an iPod, yeah, but we haven't got much time to talk about it. Well, I'm going to talk to you about it late, a bit later okay. on. Then I had several iPods. Actually, story. several iPods, and now, of course, what people do is they mm. have iPhones, which actually operate as iPods. Yes, they do. And in fact, on my car, mm. if I plug the uh, my my phone into. Uh, the charging point. Yes, it actually comes up on the system as an iPod. Yes, that's right. With Bizarre. all the, with all the tracks that you've got yeah, yeah. stored and yes. all that. I my nephew bought me an iPod ten years ago. Really? And it's still in the box. Right. I've still got it in my wardrobe. Really? And he kept saying, "Oh, Uncle Mike, you know, I've done a huge list of songs yeah. for you to load well, up on you your iPod." To it. Well, there's nothing loaded on it. I oh. never took it out of the box. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, so we'll get him to do it then. Well, what's the point? I, 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 iPods well, are now you... so old-fashioned that well, nobody really. uses them. Well, no, but you can play it in the car, can't you? You can plug it in the car. Don't know. I wouldn't know how to do that. I'll have wouldn't to find you... out. OK. Yeah. Uh, Dr Tim O'Brien says this. As a psychologist, I'm concerned about Mr Parry's need to luxuriate in first class. I'm also <laughs> left-wing and on strike every day. Oh, really? Yeah, good man. <laughs> I think he's being slightly facetious. Yeah, I think he is. I didn't say luxuriate in first class. I said business, business class. Yeah, I'm not snobby, though. Know. Exactly. <laughs> Now, something extraordinary has happened, right? We've got a poll on the way uh, currently, which is on yeah. uh, our Twitter account, which says uh, Antonio Conte is trying hard to wind mm. up Tottenham. Is yeah. he, A, trying to unsettle Harry Kane, yeah. or B, uh, after more money to spend at his own club? Yeah. It's currently a deadlock at 50-50. Really? Well, that's fantastic. 50-50. So well, can, nobody can decide whether, uh, yeah. whether Antonio Conte is on a massive wind-up yeah. uh, or whether he's actually just trying to tell Chelsea yeah. that he wants more money for, uh, for his own uh, coffers. Well, absolutely. Mm. But uh, that's what we do here on TalkSport. We stimulate debate. Yes, we do. We want your opinion. We yeah. want you to, you know, tell us what you're thinking. Because exactly. opinion and debate is what talk sports all about. Indeed. Okay? Now, also a couple of things to mention yeah. to you because we also mm. like to know where people are listening from. Because we've got a kind of a, it's a kind of occasional thing where we ask people if they're in a, a particular place, a point Absol- in the world, absolutely, which might be a bit unusual. So let us know. Now, how about this one from Michael? Mm. He says, "I love listening to the family show from Tengiz in Kazakhstan." Wow, Bladeration in moderation. Uh, did I go to Kazakhstan Ten- did for you an not, England game? Did you not go to Kazakhstan yeah. or was it Azerbaijan? 
Uh, One of the two, right? I think it was Kazakhstan. Was it? I think it was Kazakhstan, yeah. Okay. That was a few years ago. Is that the place where the team came from to play Celtic? In the one of the Europa League uh, tournaments, I think, or maybe the Champions League, I'm and they sure. wanted to. Um, they approached the uh, Celtic uh, Football Club because they wanted to slaughter a goat in the tunnel. I'm I think sure, it might have been sure a Kazakhstan team. Was it? I was think it, so, yeah. it, it might have been. Glasgow police the, said they the, couldn't do it. The place I went to was like Nepal. I mean, mm. it was like a magic kingdom mm. in the middle of a sort of wilderness. You know what I mean? That would be Azerbaijan, no? Could have been. Wouldn't could it have be? been. And then Mari yeah. says, uh, listening to the two mics on the way to Manchester Airport, yeah. going to Ibiza mm. from Pestatin. Prestatin. Yeah. Oh, Prestatin, I love it. It's your Prestatin old stomping ground, isn't it? It's right next to Frith Beach, which is the one we love because it was sand dunes, you know, and we used to uh, run around we, the sand dunes. You don't mean you and I. No, no, you idiot. I well, mean, when you my, say me and we, my family. Well, you're sitting here with me, so yeah. when you say we, people automatically assume we, yeah, but as I'm, in the two mics. When I'm talking about going to the beach, yeah. you know, on a bank holiday with my mum and dad. Yeah. That was when I was a kid. Well, I didn't I do know. that in my 50s, you idiot. Yeah, all right. Well, you turned up on my holiday last year. Listen, there's a great one here from Mr. Mojo, right? Oh, yeah. And he says this. He says, Porky, mm. your iPod could be worth a bit of money. Do not open it. Really? They fetch a lot, especially in a sealed box. Is that right? Now, mine is in a sealed box. OK. I've never opened it. All right. My, my poor nephew, who, you know, time and time again, you know, reams and reams of songs to load onto yes. it. And I never got round to opening it and taking it out. And okay. I had it about ten years. They're extraordinary. I mean, when they first came out, they mm. were extraordinary pieces of technology. Yes. They were, like, wafer thin. Yeah. And one of the reasons I was used mm. to have one was mm. my sister, who worked on Wall Street at the time. Yes. Every Christmas, they used to give away, you know, gifts to their sort yeah, of, um, yeah. you know, good Major clients, investors, right? Yeah. Good clients. Yeah. And so she always, she always, for some reason, there was yeah. always a stock, a stack of, uh, of iPods. Really? Because they'd give out iPods as kind of, you know, just confetti yeah. to people. And were and they so, worth like $50 or so in those days? In those days, like no, that. they were about 100 a couple of hundred yeah. sometimes. Well, I mean, that's brilliant, I mean, she, the ones that she had, actually, yeah. she, at one time she worked for a Swiss bank, yeah. and the Swiss bank's name was emblazoned on the iPod. Well, brilliant, yeah, I, I mean, like it that. was great. I like that. Um, now, how about this one from Glenn, who's Ooh. correcting us. He says it was Richie Valance and the big bopper who died with Buddy Holly, not the crickets. Oh, I, they I were travelling by road. That's right. I thought that was the case as mm. well. It was a very, very sad occasion. I mean, you know, you, you know, a lot of these stars went at 27 as the 27 club, isn't it, and all that. But Buddy Holly, I think he was 24. And not only that, but I mean, the boy had already written some of the pop classics, which will stay with us for centuries, you know what I mean? Yes. And just think what else he would have written. It was a terrible shame. Oh, absolutely Now, right. I want to tell you something about a car. We've been talking about cars lately. Yeah, we I'm have. in the process of changing mine. And yes. You're very happy with your, yeah. uh, your uh, July. Yes. Uh, I'm only joking. It's a very yeah, nice no, car. Well, you can say whatever you like about it. Well, I've got it's to say it's a nice the car, car of the now, year. Because, uh, well, it's the car of the year. Uh, and also, of... uh, Tony Cascarino's going to get one. Well, and also a member of my family has just had oh, it really? delivered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sitting on the driveway. How embarrassing for you. It is a bit embarrassing. Yeah. But anyway, let's... Well, you better not slag it off then. I'm not going to slag it off. Now then, let me tell you this. Mm. Uh, if you picked up a car that was worth £260,000... Yes. And you got so excited... I'd be terrified. Well, you drive it out the uh, the uh, showroom, obviously, and there's not many showrooms around for Ferraris. No. For that's what it was. Yeah. A Ferrari Scuderia. Scuderia. An hour later, mm. you come to a stretch of road, which is pretty notorious for being difficult to yeah. navigate, particularly in the wet. Yes. Your car comes off the road, mm. it, 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 it runs... Runs God. through a fence into a field, Oy. explodes into flames, right. and he's gone within minutes. That's hor- horrific, isn't it? N- nothing but ash and and just burnt metal. I mean, I mean, I mean, I just cannot believe it. So did he hit something? Then? No, the guy did not hit anything. Right. It skidded off the road. It, right. it, it's it, the police um, detailed it as a one vehicle uh, accident. Okay, yes. there was nothing along. Now, not nothing else involved. Now it went fifty yards across a field and then just burst into flames. Right, because apparently there is so. Much much, you know, technology in a Ferrari and, and, and so much intricate... That's incredible, um, um, you know, Well, maybe the fuel work. line was cut or something like that. No, 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 I don't think there's anything like that. I don't think there's anything suspicious. Police officers... No, I don't mean that. I mean in the, in, as, as the yep. car crashed. Because why would it suddenly just burst into flames? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's such a sensitive car. Mm. You know, there's so many sort of magic parts on it. I can only speculate. Yeah. But anyway, the point is, this happened in, believe it or not, in uh, near Barnsley. Barnsley, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Barnsley isn't really known without, with no disrespect to Barnsley, which I think is Darren Goss' name, isn't it? Why are you suggesting Barnsley's a surprising place to find someone driving a Ferrari? If you read about a Ferrari bursting into flames yeah. in a one-car collision, you would normally associate that with the home counties or Cheshire. That's not true. Because of... Football that wealth is such and that sort rubbish. of thing. No, no, it's not. That is such absolutely unadulterated no, uh, uh, stereotyping. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many wealthy people live in Yorkshire? Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, lot, very wealthy, wealthy people. people. But more Are wealthy people. Are you saying they're, not, they're too tight to spend money no, on Ferrari? No, I'm saying population-wise, look against at them. population statistics, more rich people live in, inside the M25. Mm. But anyway, yes. well, and in the southeast. Mm. 
Anyway, the the problem was it caused a, a traffic jam on the M1, OK? Yeah, right. Uh, and the police put out a notice, the South Yorkshire Police Operational Support, where I was saying, Afternoon, folks. Sorry that you were stuck in traffic on the M1 south around Junction 37. Unfortunately, officers were deployed to a single vehicle collision yes. with reports that the vehicle had left the carriageway and burst into flames. So did it actually happen on the M1 then? I'm just working this out. Yeah. Road conditions were wet at the time and as officers arrived on the scene, it became clear there was a, ve- a vehicle well alight. Colleagues from South Yorkshire Fire and Rescue were in attendance very quickly and doused water all over some kind of sporty motor Mm. uh, some 50 or so metres down a banking. Right. Uh, As we had to make inquiries, we found the driver and were amazed to see he only had minor cuts and bruises near to the scene of the crash. Wow. We asked the driver, what sort of car is that, please? He said it was a Ferrari. Right, it was a Ferrari. (laughs) Uh, we detected a sense of damaged pride. Uh, pride. The uh, the driver then offered, quotes, I've only just got it, I picked it up an hour ago. Right. Um, he and, must feel like a right plonker, mustn't he? Yeah, I- I- exactly. So the police then said, uh, there's a very serious issue here. Over the past couple of weeks, there has been a number of collisions where driving styles have not reflected the road and weather conditions. Mm. We ask that you please take more care. Well, they're incredibly difficult cars to drive as well. I mean, yeah. if you go on YouTube, there's a whole bunch of pieces of footage yes. of people driving Lamborghinis, yes. uh, Bugattis, Ferraris, because they're supercars. Yeah, they are. And you can't just get into a supercar yeah. and expect to be able to know how to drive it. Well, And you see loads of instances yeah. of people sitting at traffic lights, right? Yeah. And you hear them revving it, you That's know, because right. it sounds cool. Yeah. And it's like, mm, you know, it sounds <laughs> right. great. And as soon, right, as, yeah. they, as soon as they let the handbrake off, <laughs> yeah, the wheels just spin. That's, that's right. And it just spins off into a, into a ditch. They could be all over the place. Yeah. But you've made a very good point here because we've done some more research here, right? Yes. Now, it's a £260,000 Ferrari. Yeah. It is listed as a supercar, and it was a Scuderia. Yes. Uh, Ferrari Scuderia. Yes. Now, the, the point is that, of course, you know, like when you've got a Rolex watch... Mm. Rolex know every watch they've ever made, and so when you well, go I don't in... know that because I haven't got a Rolex. No, of watch. course you haven't. No, but I have. Yeah, and when you go, you've into... got a particularly old and ugly one. No, I haven't. I've got I've got a, a, a fantastic uh, vintage oh, Rolex yeah. watch. Vintage, yeah. And I may be taking um, possession of another one very soon. What do you mean, buying another one? Well, I'm doing a deal. You know. With oh, somebody. what you mean? You did a deal with someone? Well, maybe. maybe. I know exactly who you did a deal with. No, I won't reveal no, it. No, I may be replacing the one I've got now yeah. with another one. But anyway, no, you pay tax on it's it. It's got a think. blue face, by the way. The new yeah, one. So really? Well, I'll match yours. Well, no, but great at Goodison on match day, you know. You're not going to be at Goodison Ferrari. for much longer. Uh, eh? You're not going to be no, at Goodison well, for much well, longer. Uh, I said a blue face Ferrari then, by the way. I meant a blue face Rolex. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, listen, let me, let me, let me get into this. get on with this, please? Yes, let me get on to this. Yeah. Right, the Ferrari 430 Scuderia yes. uh, can take off from 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, yeah. right? And it can burn to a crisp it, in 2.6 seconds. It, it, it can, but listen to this. Um, a Ferrari spokesman issued a statement after this, oh, right? Yeah. And they said, uh, we are not going to comment on the crash of any vehicle, mm. but the vehicle was definitely a Scuderia. Yeah. He said, what I can emphasise to people who purchase Ferraris yeah. is this. We always offer and encourage motorists who have bought a Ferrari to undergo a driving course at our Maranello track in Italy yeah. to learn how to drive yes. such a supercar Absolutely. safely. Yeah. The offer comes mm. with the purchase of the car. And they should take them up on that because yeah. it isn't like any other car. Yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. He says anyone who purchases a Ferrari through a dealership is encouraged to attend one of these courses yeah. so they know how to drive the car in various road and weather conditions. Yeah. And I mean that really does bring to light an area of life which most of us are not familiar with, doesn't no. it? You know? Exactly right. I, I think it's terrific. And what I was going to say is, I wasn't going to say is, mm. because we have such a wide ranging orgi- uh, wide ranging audience, yes, I would love a Ferrari owning listener to Talksport, please, yeah. to give us a call uh-huh. if you wouldn't mind. Oh, yeah. I'll give you the non mangle mouthed uh, version of the Strangely number. enough, since you said that word mangle mouthed yes. a few weeks ago, yes. your mouth has become quite mangled. <laughs> My mouth has become yeah. mangled, I'm afraid, just it saying it, yeah. Mm. And it's 08717 yeah. double two, double three, double four. Have you um, been on this course in a place called Marinello in Italy where yeah. they encourage you to, you know, learn how to drive? Wasn't there what a is... guy called Peter Marinello that used to play for Arsenal? Well, his name was spelt Marinello yeah. and this place is Maranello. Ah, OK. But you're absolutely right. He mm. was the Scottish George Best he who was. came to Arsenal and was going to yeah. turn the first division round. Yeah. yeah, I remember him. But, I mean, you know, we have such a wide-ranging... Um, wide-ranging. Wide-ranging, yeah. Wide-ranging. Yes. Um, uh, audience. Audience, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was going to say yeah. uh, audience. Stop talking for a while. People and Have somebody out there 
will have driven mm. a Ferrari and we'd love to hear from I'm him. I'm sure, please. absolutely right. Mm. Uh, now, Lady Laura's just come back and said, thank you for the birthday wishes for her mother. Her mother is, in fact, 63. Oh, wow, well, that's a fine age. She's 37. OK, well, that's brilliant. There well we done. That sounds like a good family. Where is my mind? Where is my mind? Where is my mind? This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Liam says, I see the man of the people is buying another Rolex. <laughs> well, no, I'm, that's not fair. What well, I'm doing what do you is mean I'm swapping. Fair? You just said you were. I'm updating it. That's what I'm doing. Oh, so you're I'm... getting rid of the other one, are you? Yes, probably. Are you yeah. going to go and see the men in the white coats? No. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> depends which men in the white coats well, you're talking about. Well, the ones that you say run Rolex. Oh, they do. Uh, if you go to St. James's Square, yeah. there's a huge building and, and it's got all cameras, uh, you know, at the front door. Yeah. There's obviously a lot of very valuable watches in there. And you've got to sort of, you have to have a face recognition print type thing to be able to get in. And that's just to, you know, hand your watch in to have it sent back to Switzerland for a service. Yes. And, and they put a new bevel on it and all that kind right. of stuff. So when I get the one that I'm proposing to try and purchase, uh, I'll have to go there and get it done. You, you know what I mean? Give the other one back. Well, we well, shall see. necessarily have to, but uh, I, as a man of the people... It, I, well, you wear one on each wrist. Well, it'd be a bit excessive to have two Rolexes, I agree. Well, yeah. you was a guy killed for a Rolex down in uh, South London the other day, so you better be careful. I know, you've got to be very be careful. Very careful. Days, now, yeah. let's go back to John Norman, who is at the Oval, yep. uh, where it is lunch. John? I'm not sure how much cricket we're going to get for the rest of the day because the rain map doesn't look particularly pretty. It is pretty ghastly out there considering yeah. it's almost the end of July, you know. I, I tell you what, it's not a t- it's like uh, autumn weather now. I know. I keep the windows open because I love that sort of uh, breeze that's turning from summer, you really? know what I mean? It's come very early. You've got to be careful though because if you leave them too wide yeah. uh, and that massive rainstorm comes, yeah, that's you know, true. the inside of your window gets very wet. Yeah, yeah, I have to watch that indeed. Mm. Um, so the cricket's off, but yes. I mean we've got a monitor in the studio here and yeah. I'm looking at the Sky presentation team. Indeed, yeah. Which is a, a, a very distinguished bunch. You've got uh, Michael Atherton, yes. uh, the former uh, England captain. You've got Shane Warne. Shane Warne, of yeah. course, the world's top bowler. Both wearing sort years. of what you might describe as sky blue blazers. Yes, that's right. And, yeah. a, and, a, and a sort of blue and uh, light blue tie, yeah. which must be something to do with, uh, it's not the MCC. The MCC Would it be tie. Surrey tie, maybe? Could be Surrey, you're absolutely right, because of course this is the Oval, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. And uh, the, the MCC tie is called the bacon and eggs tie, because yes. it's uh, the colour of bacon and Indeed, eggs. Indeed, yeah. yeah. So it's not that, is it? But what most interests me is yeah. David Gower, yes. who, of course, was a very distinguished England captain himself. Indeed he was. And uh, one of the finest... Um, fine fellow, actually, David fine Gower. Fine fellow, well. great guy, yeah. met him, and he's wearing an extraordinary suit. He's got a dark blue suit so, on. It so can only be described as a ridiculous-looking suit. Well, it's I'm not I'm really not dark. No, it's not dark blue. It's a kind of Royal powder, blue? It's a sort of powder so, blue. No, it's not it? powder, because they're wearing powder blue blazers. Well, they're sky blue, I would say. It's got, OK, sky or powder. He's wearing a royal blue suit, I would say. Well, maybe. It's, but, very, it's a very sort of bright but, blue, isn't it? Yeah, but the interesting thing about it is is his lapels yeah. are edged with white. Yes. You know, sometimes, as I've ordered in my new car, you mm. get, you'll get black leather seats, but yes. you get a white rim around With them. the white stitching, yeah. Yeah, white yeah, stitching. I've got that in mine, I think. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and his lapels... This looks ridiculous. I'm sorry though. that I'm laughing, but... It looks it, ridiculous. It looks like he's wearing sort of uh, fairy lights, yeah, you know it looks what I mean, like, on the edge look, of no, his you know, it looks like the tailor yeah. hasn't finished with it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because you know when you get a suit tailored... Yeah, I mean, like turned and, inside out. Yeah, when they've got loads of white sort of white needlework on it. It looks like... Somebody's yeah. forgotten to take it out. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. bizarre. It is bizarre. And as I say, you know, David Gower's got a fantastic track record. Because, you know, I mean, when I mm. turned up to, to see you last weekend yes. at your uh, charity do, oh, I yes. was wearing a new blue suit. Did you notice? I noticed. Yeah. I, and you got it off the peg, I think, didn't I did, you? yeah. It you perfectly. It in Canary Wharf, yeah. Well right. done. Rather pleased. A blue suit's yeah. obviously the thing. Yeah, that's me, yeah. You may have to get yourself one. Uh, yeah. Now, how about this from Simon? Yeah. Uh, he says, I managed Ronnie O'Sullivan and Judd Trump's commercial rights in China for three years. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I negotiated a deal for Ferrari to provide Ferrari FFs for tournament courtesy cars really? uh, when they came to China. Yeah. I couldn't drive them, but had drivers. It was the best Ferraris I'd ever seen. Really? Mm. Well, listen, uh, Stephen has very... Uh, you, haven't, uh, you haven't read this one, have you? Stephen has very kindly sent us a copy of a previous story oh, yeah. involving a Ferrari, and it was in Hungary's capital, Budapest, yes. right? Uh, the guy picked up a million-pound Ferrari, and uh, totaled it, for want of a better word, mm. seconds after driving it out of the um, 
the showroom oh, because yeah. he wasn't watching where he was going. Really? It was a it was a million pound car and crash bang wallop. It was in Ferrari blood red, so to speak. That is horrendous. Uh, yeah, and there's pictures of it here, and in and, and it's completely smashed up. So but I would, be, I mean, I would be terrified to even drive a car like that. You know, I yeah. mean, I don't know whether you've ever driven a very expensive car. I mean, I know that you're. you're I'm not saying your car's cheap. but no. I mean, I'm talking about a properly yeah, expensive I know exactly car. What you're talking I mean, about. I, a Maserati or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, roll, I had a Rolls Royce once. Yes, that's when right, I was yeah. in New York. Yes, and uh, only because we knew the guy who was the PR for Rolls Royce, and he promised me one yeah. for my wedding. Right? Yes, but he wasn't able to get one for my wedding. Okay. But he rang me about a month and a half, two months later. Yeah, and he said, "Great news! I've got, I've got one for you." Mm. And it was like a silver uh, Spur Two or something Fantastic, like that. Fantastic! Yeah, I mean, it was the most beautiful car you've ever been in. Exactly. Yeah, but I was terrified in Manhattan, particularly mm. dry, because I had to drive it out of New York well, to get yeah. it into the countryside. That's right. right. Somebody crashes into you. Well, you know what Manhattan's like. Of course, I mean, yeah. you know, cars are getting. I mean, you have to have a cheap car there That's because right. everybody's always crashing into you. Yeah, and you used to park mm. by by basically yeah. backing into the car behind you. That's right, yeah. And then sort of into the car in front of you to get it into the space. Yeah, you used to nudge each other's yeah. bumpers, yeah. But worse than that was yeah. when you were sitting at the traffic lights. Mm. You know, I remember sitting vividly sitting in yeah. about 37th and 5th Avenue. Yeah. And there was a mass of people crossing the road. Yes. And they were all just staring at yeah, the car. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, you know, some of them didn't look like they were very happy about the fact that I was in it. I'm telling you what, mate, you could have been in a bonfire of the vanity well, situation yeah. there. Because... I mean, but this was Midtown. Yeah, so, I mean, exactly, I was fairly yeah. safe. But people yeah. were just really jealously looking at the car. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, and I was just absolutely... I mean, by the time I'd had it a couple of hours, mm. I was fine. Yeah. For the first two hours, uh, well, I was absolutely petrified. I've never driven a car as expensive as that. The um, When we had uh, the former motoring editor, David Benson, yes. of the, uh, of the uh, Daily Express, yeah. who was a great guy, mm. but had a bit of a problem because uh, he didn't actually like driving test cars. It might have had something to do with the fact that he was a very enthusiastic drinker at one time in his life, David. Indeed. Never got done for a, a drunk driving, of course. Yeah. He was a top professional and all that. But he preferred to spend the weekend having a few sherbets yes. with his mates down the pub right. and was happy for me to... Uh, happy for you to, ride, to yeah, drive the cars. Yeah, to drive the cars around, you know. And uh, as I was his boss as well, and Dave was a bit of a groveler, I have to say, it made me happy to have those cars, and he was happy. He was making me happy, you yes. see what I mean? Right. But uh, the most expensive one he ever gave me was... Um, it was a Porsche... But the so that's not like a supercar, no. although, although it was a very expensive car. Mm. But you won't believe it. Pretty fast, though, I imagine. Oh, it's very fast indeed. It's very fast indeed. I think it was a Porsche Carrera. Is that the expensive Carrera? One? Yeah. Or is it a 911? Well, I it could it have been a 911. I think it was a 911. Well, it could have been a 911 Carrera. But, but what was of most interest was, uh, you know, you picked up the car in the in the underground car park at the Express. Yeah. And it was bright blue. It was a beautiful car, and I loved this. It was blue's my colour. Mm. And I had a new girlfriend called Barbara, you know. Barbara? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Barbara? Yeah, yeah Barbara, yeah. had a girlfriend called Barbara. Yeah, she was... Um, she Barbara was a, Ann. She was a friend of uh, my ex-friend, Ms Malone, you know. Oh, was she? Yeah, 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 that sort right, of thing, okay. you know. So, um, so I go and Have you seen her here, by the way? She's getting some stuff at Talk Radio at the moment. Well, I'm delighted. She's yeah. a top woman. As far as and, you haven't uh, been uh, tempted to take her out again. Well, well you know, I, uh, she's got her life. She's married years from now, yeah. Has Oh, it's a very happy life. Okay. Now, let me just tell you this. So, anyway, so pick her up. And then I'm uh, I'm then hurtling down, you know, into the country. We're going off somewhere. Yeah. And cars behind are flashing. <laughs> cars coming the other way are flashing, all that kind of stuff. Right. I couldn't work out what it was. Yeah. In fact, the registration... This Sorry, it was a 911. Right. Because... The registration plate yeah. was A nine eleven, right? Okay, which gave me the clue. It was a nine eleven. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Easy to remember. But it was the original nine eleven yes. car, that, right. you know, of the of the the, the latest like design. Yeah. You see what I mean? Right. So they put the nine eleven plate on yes. it. So I had one of the most distinctive cars in Britain, mm. and it was no wonder people behind were flashing. Well, why were they me. flashing you? Well, because on the on the back of the car, it had a you know like a silver. Uh, monogram mm. saying Porsche 911, yeah. and then below it was the registration plate yeah, A911. That doesn't answer why they were flashing. Because you. they thought, wow, that's quite unique to have a number plate of the model of well, your car. Why would you flash somebody for just because they had a unique number plate? Because they thought that's I was... the sort of idiotic behaviour you would get involved no, in. No, no, no. Because oh, they... maybe somebody famous, I should flash them and they'll stop. That's exactly and right. Want to meet me. That's exactly right. That's they must rubbish. have thought I was so you no. know famous and I'm popular not buying it. and such a big shot. How'd you get on with Barbara anyway? More importantly. Uh, Oh, did she last out the day? No. Lasted... Or did she leave you at the pub? No, no, no. No, no, no. It lasted about six weeks. Six weeks? Yeah, it was quite a long time for you. Yeah. Well, she, well had done. A, she had a garden flat in somewhere like Ealing or oh, something yeah. like that, which was mm. very... It's very you know, far out. No, it wasn't that far out, actually. It was very uh, accommodating. Was it? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway. It's a family show. It was That's a enough show. information. Definitely. By the way, a Penguin has told us the blue at the Oval is for Cricket United Day, a charity for former players. Oh, that's and brilliant. And everybody's been encouraged to wear blue. Well, actually... Uh, I'm surprised you didn't know that. <laughs> David 
Yeah, well, that's why he's wearing up. blue. Yeah, no, but close up, it looks it's, it's, it looks like it's somebody's cra- you know got a well, like it's crane all for, and, for charity and have drawn his lapels onto yeah. his suit. Well, it's very you know yeah. I think it's very good of them all to raise such so do I. Uh, amounts of money for charity. So do I, and I'm glad that we've raised the issue exactly so that right. people are listening yeah. they can get involved right, themselves. Right. <laughs> Sport, we are the two mics. Matt the Rat uh, has tweeted. He says, Please congratulate Porky on managing a whole two hours of Saturday radio mm. without offending any sports stars. Well, <laughs> well done. Yes. Well, I don't you. know what you mean by that, Matt, yeah. because uh, we I... did uh, many, many hours of radio last week. Didn't yeah. offend anybody. Exactly. Um, and in fact, I think this time last week, mm. uh, we hadn't offended anybody no, either. We don't so offend still, people. There's still plenty of time. Yeah. I mean, it didn't really start uh, hitting the fan, as it were, until about half past five in the afternoon. Well, we don't to offend people. We ask for opinion. Yeah. And we express opinions. Yeah. And uh, but in I think this world in which we live, uh, that's what makes radio go round. In this world in which yeah. we live, you're not allowed to have opinions anymore because yeah. people get upset. Now, uh, surely nobody, however, will be mm. upset about the fact that bag in box wine is making a comeback. Fantastic. And to help us along with why this is happening and whether it's worth uh, taking part in, mm. let's talk to Helena Nicklin, uh, who's a wine writer and owns what's called the Wine Bird uh, Tasting uh, Scenario. Helena, a very good afternoon to you. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. How are you? Very, very well. well indeed, thank we you. We are very well indeed. Now, uh, we both are sadly old enough to remember when boxes of wine were the only things you could drink if you didn't have much money <laughs> mm. and you'd stick it, in the, uh, stick it in the fridge and sort of press that little black button uh, until you drunk the thing dry. No, I never put it in the fridge. It never lasted long enough. Really? No. Nah, so you drank to... it warm. Well, you really? d- used to take it on picnics and things, didn't you? And take it out on <laughs> yeah. the Saturday afternoon when the pubs were closed, Helena. That's how old we are. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hel- so what is what is this uh, comeback of the bag in the box wine scenario then? Yeah, well, there is a comeback, and it's big time, and for so many good reasons. I, I personally think it's great. Um, I- it's not just the rise in stuff like glamping. I mean, who wants to cart hundreds of very heavy glass bottles around but it's the value aspect it's so much cheaper to produce and transport um when it's in a pouch and a cardboard box and it is in all that glass but also that there are environmental factors there the wine keeps a bit longer and most importantly it means that it's a great way of lowering the cost without compromising the quality of the wine well do you know what helena i don't know why it ever went out of fashion because you can make as many jokes as you like about it being cheap plonk and all that kind of stuff. But, you know... Well, we used it to... was cheap plonk, though. Well, well, maybe. But, I mean, if you're having a barbecue, Helen, on, on a you know a pleasant sort of September afternoon, mm. you've got a few mates around from work, do you really think they're going to start arguing about the actual quality of the wine in well, the box? Well, yeah, of course they are. Well, I don't think they yeah. are. I mean, has well, it... Well, your in... friends wouldn't. Hang on, Helena, has it improved <laughs> in quality over the decades? It certainly has. I mean, there is a world of difference between the stuff that my parents and maybe you, I don't know, were drinking in their kitchens in the 1980s. It's so much better than it used to be, Um, not just because of production techniques, but I think we've all got a bit more discerning in our taste, whether we know about about food or wine at all. We just Mm. expect a slightly higher quality of stuff than we used to, Mm. and we, we demand it. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's definitely much better than it used well, to be. Well, I knew to come back into fashion when, as an heroic gentleman, I was coming through London Bridge Station a few weeks ago, and two <laughs> young girls were making their way to Glastonbury, right? And they were hauling so much blinking equipment with them. You know, I had to give them a hand to pull their tent across the floor of London Bridge Station. But what I did notice was that on the back of each of their massive rucksacks mm. was dangling a box of wine. Really? And <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 I said to them, well girls, you know, you've got all your equipment, at least you've got priorities right. It's, it's there. I mean, it's... Well, how so, is it dangling? Well, it was, you know... It was like, attached to some kind of a rope, was it? Well, no, but you know, like, you would hang a pan on the back of your rucksack yeah. because you want to fry your eggs. Yeah. Well, they'd hung a box of wine. They'd yeah, got but the, how, though? Well, I don't know. They attached it to a strap, you idiot. Right. How should I'm I sure know? you're not making this up. Of course not. But, right. Helena, what I'm Just saying is, what I'm saying <laughs> is, one of the great things about the box of wine, unlike the bottles of wine, yeah. It is so transportable. You don't smash it. It's square, so it can go into um, uh, tight spaces in your car and all that kind of stuff. I'm, yep. just, de- I'm just delighted it's back. Now, how big mm-hmm. is it going to get this time round? Um, I think a lot bigger, because we, we are doing a lot more of those festivals. We're glamping a lot more, and yep. the barriers are definitely coming down with wine a bit. I mean, it's taking time, but this mm. is a really good way to 
to smash some of the pretentiousness around wine. Uh, I mean, the wine in these boxes is never going to be the stuff that you lay down for years in the cellar. Mm. It's just lovely, fresh, unpretentious wine to drink right now, and yes. that can only be a good thing in my book. Now, my, yeah. my reason for not liking bag, uh, bag in a box wine or wine in a box, mm. whatever you want to call it, is that you don't know how much you're drinking, right? Until such time as you kind <laughs> well, of lift it up. Well, that's never put you off of the previous no, 40 years. I don't mean that I don't want to drink a lot of wine. What I mean mm. is I like to know, for example, if I've got one bottle and I've drunk a bottle of wine, then I know I'm onto the second bottle of wine. Yeah. If you've got a litre and a half box, you know, you have no idea how much you've drunk. You could count the glasses, mate. Exactly. Thank don't you, be so ridiculous. You know, like any normal person uh, would, you oaf. Well, why would I count the glasses? <laughs> well, I don't know how many glasses are in a box. <laughs> well, well, yes, you do. How many? All right, well, if it's how a How many litre, glasses in a box? If it's a litre and a half... Yeah. It depends on the box. If a litre and a half, it's about eight large glasses. Eight large glasses. Yeah, Is that so. right, uh, Helena? It's about six glasses in a bottle, so yeah, about that. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, Paul's an yeah. expert on the number of glasses now, in a box. Now, 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 Helena, let me ask you this, please. In the old days, in the eighties, and all that, when you got down, she to... she was a child in the eighties. I know, I know, it. I know. I Helena, wish. Helena is reinventing technology. What I'm saying is, what would happen is when you got more and more bladderated, and you were getting down to the bottom of the tap, you would then rip the top off the box, get the silver bag inside, and then actually hold it <laughs> above your head and and drain yeah, the last squeeze drops, it, like yeah, one of those, yeah, yeah. Uh, those wine skins yes, in Spain. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And squeeze. I may have seen that on occasion. Exactly. Yeah. Squeeze the last drop out. Now, is the technology any better in getting it out of the the bag? <laughs> Good question. Do you know, hmm. I don't actually know the answer to that. I imagine it probably is, because yes. it definitely seems to keep a lot better than it used to. So yeah. there is something going on there with the technology yeah. that makes it better. I'm right. sure it is. It's, it's still in a silver bag inside the box. I mean, that's uh, that seemed the safest way to do it. I what suppose does it make? Yeah, I think well, so. Vacuum yeah. packed. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and I would imagine another reason why it's become more popular is because in the 80s we didn't have much what we call New World wine. It was either French or German or something like that. But, I mean, now you've got, like, Argentinian, yeah. Chile, Australian, you've got wine from all over the world. And, and presumably producers in those places have said this is the way to box it up and get it over to Britain. Absolutely. We've got so much more choice and, you know, we know what's good. So producers have to make good wine as well. Mm. And the other thing, of course, and I've actually I've got a tweet here from Hugh who says Tesco's Pinot Grigio, 17 pounds with the equivalent of four bottles, Mm. decent quaffing wine and sits neatly in the fridge. Porky would love it. That's quite good for you, isn't it? Because that's your favourite wine, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a a real bargain. So that's just over four quid a bottle. But what I was going to say is for those wine snobs around Mm. uh, who Porky thinks I am one of, which I'm not actually, Mm. um, an awful lot of wine is now imported into this country not in bottles anyway, right? It's imported in barrels, it's imported in large quantities and then and then decanted into bottles anyway. So it's not as if I suppose it matters anymore. No, it doesn't really. I mean, it's and it's quite trendy to to go to places that serve wine out of vats that's been brought over from France and kegs and pouches, all these things. Sure. It's not just bag and box anymore. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that's, that's great. Now, Helen, tell us exactly what your role in the wine industry is these days. How, how do you distribute it and all this kind of stuff? Well, I don't. I don't sell wine. I, I talk about it. Yeah. I write about it. I, I present about it and make slightly silly educational videos with my dog. No, no, that's that, what's your dog's favourite wine? <laughs> I think he's a Tempranillo guy. Actually, is he? That's is the he? great yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now we'll get slated now from people who say, "Oh, what did you call the wine bird for?" But that is, in fact, the name of your company, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's it's all it, all one word. Um, yeah, it, it's just meant to give an impression that I'm. Of what I do, which is hopefully breaking down the barriers of wine a bit more. I have my own way of describing yes. wine, yes. which you may or may not know about, um, but it's quite different from the norm. So yeah. it's basically to say this is not the pretentious, stuffy thing you think it's going to be. Well, I think you are, you know, doing a great service to the, the British drinking population. <laughs> if you but can, I mean, I if sense, you can though, but I sense mm. that, you know, the old image of the box of wine and, and the people who are buying it for sort of four quid, mm. you know, because they couldn't afford to buy proper wine, yeah. uh, has changed completely because from what I'm seeing, mm. some of this boxed wine is costing quite a lot of money, isn't it? You can, yeah, you can actually spend a bit more on it. I mean, independent wine merchants will have slightly higher quality, slightly more, slightly more expensive mm. wines. So yeah, there is something for everybody there, definitely. Mm. And I, I was certainly drinking it in Glastonbury from a, from a box, and as were many, many wine. I don't hear any sordid tales of your time in Glastonbury. Please, no, you know. no, it's a well, family show. Family show. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it must have actually gone across the social barriers because last time I saw it, they were stacked on the shelves of Waitrose, and I can tell you, first time round. Last time you were in Waitrose, for, uh, I can tell you, the first time round in the eighties, Ella, you didn't find boxed wine in Waitrose. You found it in the uh, local corner shop 
right at the back there on the uh, on yeah. the on the lower behind shelf. the Matthias Rose. That's right, you did. <laughs> behind the Matthias. Rose. Yeah, behind it. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Wow. Well, listen, Helena, I'm delighted that you're able yep. to come on and talk to us about it. Thank uh, you have very you got much. a blog that you want to direct people towards? Oh, I, I certainly do. Winebird.co.uk. Everything you can find is on there. I'm also on Instagram with short videos at One Minute Winies. Okay, Lovely. we'll have a look for okay. you. Thank you very well, much uh, indeed. Well, Helena, one of these days you may want to come into the studio and join us in a bit Why? of a wine tasting session. Why okay? would she? Because oh, she's an definitely. expert and you're not. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do lots of analogies with sports players, so uh, yeah, that could work nice. That would be great. <laughs> Thank no you very much indeed. Yeah, well, as, as, uh, as it's been pointed out, well, our knowledge of sport is uh, almost next to nothing. Isn't it? Well, unfortunately, no, it was that guy Charlie Sales. <laughs> Yeah. Some, uh, some. Uh, I'm not sure why he said that. Some, uh, you know, uh, what should I say? Uh, Misinformed, disconnected, disconnected, disconnected this newspaper columnist. Let's talk sport. Yeah. Talk sport. Uh, we are the two mics. It's nearly half time down in uh, Singapore where Chelsea yep. are taking on Inter. We're going to go back to Steve Lilly White, who I'm hoping uh, is going to have a slightly better line than he had before. He sure uh, is. But uh, that music, of course, suggests yes. it is now the one minute moment. Yes. It's 1810 to me mm. at the moment. Is it? Really? Uh, but yeah. we'll be reshooting that, that uh, mm. once the new season starts, yeah. probably. Yeah. Um, so I guess at the end of the day, yeah. um, you've already lost the series, yes. haven't you? Because yes. there's no way you can catch me. Mm. Mm. Um, have you got one ready? Would I've you got like one to ready, go yeah. first? Yeah, I'll go first. All right, I'm going to let you go first. We're going to be counting. Counting down three, okay. a two, a one. Right, now I'm going to have to change my news agent because there's one thing that drives me <laughs> mad, right? It's when I go into a news agent and I pick three papers off the rack and I put them on his counter and then say thank you. And instead of taking my money, he puts his bony finger onto the headline of the first one. Bony? Oh, gangs pay teenagers to long crime cut. And he says, this is interesting. I said, not as interesting as the fact I'm going to miss my train if you don't take my money, right? Yeah. He says, oh, oh sorry, you know. And then he says, so how much does this paper cost? And he goes to the next paper. Ooh, New fears of EU exit delay. I don't care about the exit delay. Will you take my... Oh, how much does this paper cost, you know? And then he goes to another paper, which I'm trying to purchase, and he reads the headline story to me, and I'm saying, take my money. You are not allowed to read my papers. They yeah. don't belong to you. They're my papers. Stop reading them. You have not given me a good enough service. I'm not coming in this shop again. You delay me when I come in here. You have no right to take time reading the headlines on the newspapers. Guys are trying to be nice to hang you. on, hang on, Re- reading the headlines. He's reading them upside down as well. I'm trying to turn my papers round. It's not good sure, enough. Are you sure you're not you're not having some kind of episode? No. no. Some psychotic no, episode. No, no millions actually, there of, is no news agent. There is no man in the news millions, agent. There is no spindly finger. Millions of people will recognise with that irritation of somebody in a shop taking more notice of what you're buying than taking your money off you. I see. Yeah. Well, I think that's possibly one of the worst no, and most self-centred one-minute moments No, I think it's one of the best. has ever heard. I think it's one of the best. OK, mm. well, I'm ready to do mine if you remember that I also have to do one. Yes, you OK. You forget, don't you? OK, he's got to do one. Uh, are the technical people in place? Actually, we've got a new technical face in the technical room, so technical that's good. Technical face? He knows what he's doing. Technically. Uh, yeah, let's have the <laughs> countdown. Three, two, one. You didn't say clock. No, well, I didn't get the chance because he started the clock. <laughs> Do you want to start again? Right, let's start again, please. Just wait until you hear clock, will you? Right, three, two, one, clock. Now, I didn't, I didn't start again. <laughs> it's a bum start. Oh, it's I'm another, sorry, false, another start. false start. Try right. again, do it right. right. Let's try and get this right, shall we? Go on. Three, two, one, clock. Right, go. my one-minute moan concerns another case of what could only be described as ridiculous civil unrest. Mm-hmm. I watched in horror last night mm. uh, as part of London uh, was once again set ablaze by a bunch of angry demonstrators mm. who barricaded part of East London mm. with wheelie bins, mattresses and other debris from about 3.40 in the afternoon mm. all the way up to midnight in the mm. middle of the night. Now, there's people who are living in these parts of London. There's people who are trying to travel through parts of London. It's bad enough that they're going to be having uh, marathons, they're going to be having uh, mm. to try are going to be having bike races going all the way through the city. We've mm. now got people setting fire to it mm. just because, unfortunately, there was a case of another character who some describe as a criminal, mm. uh, unfortunately dying in police custody. Yeah. Right Now, the police have not said exactly what's going on, but they've said that there will be an investigation. The family of the guy have said, please, we don't want people demonstrating and fighting mm. and throwing petrol bombs and all mm. sorts of things. I'm afraid I have to consider mm. that there are many people in this country who would rather fight the police than do anything else. And there is absolutely no need for it. It's all going on in Dalston and Kingsland and needs to stop. See, I thought it was rubbish. 
did you? That's rubbish. Yeah, I know. I prefer yours about the phantom newspaper yeah, man. Yeah, no, he's a real newspaper man. I mean, honestly, that sort of thing happens in some neighbourhood, somewhere in this country, in some city, every weekend. I, I You're rubbish. saying it happens every weekend? Yeah, I thought it was dross. Yeah, I well, was dross. I've already won it, apparently, no, according no, no, to no, rubbish. Uh, Ross. Rubbish. Who knows dross when he sees rubbish. it? Rubbish. He said, I've won it. Utter that dross. makes it at 1910. No, no, it doesn't. No, I don't accept that. That's Another couple dross. of years and it'll be rubbish. when the Titanic sailed, won't it? Yeah, rubbish. It's about 1912. Utter, utter blinking rubbish, though. Now, uh, the Chelsea mm. game is underway down yep. in uh, Singapore. Uh, we will be going back there very, very shortly. Got quite a few good uh, tweets, though. Mm-hmm. Porky's changed his tune about people with rucksacks, hasn't he, says Tomo. Uh, people on trains, if they're young women, he even helps them on. No, no, no. I was helping these two poor young ladies dragging their tent and everything across mm. the floor of London Bridge Station. I'm a gentleman. Yes. And that's what I uh, always do. How about this from Dickie, who says, mm. uh, I didn't Porky moan last week that Mike Graham's moan was all about him. Absolute Mm. hypocrite. No, not at all. Most people will recognise what I've just told them. Shop assistants who pay more attention to what you buy than they do to actually getting the purchase um, processed and letting you get out the shop to get on with the rest of your life. Well, maybe it was too busy. And news agents in particular. And start reading the stories on the front of the paper. I've just bought that paper. It belongs to me. Stop reading it. Uh, Hi, fellas. Considering Mike Parry with his trivial newspaper tragedy, why is the score not 29 nil? Uh, to the better mics of Jay and Salford. Utter, utter rubbish. Easy victory to old MG mm. in the one-minute moan. Porky's was all me, me, me. Mm. It was awful, that. Mm. No, now, it Pete's also sent a nice picture in of this blue Rolex watch, which apparently is known as the Smurf. Yes. That's the one that you're talking about acquiring, right? It is, yes. Now, he says that it's worth £22,000. Yes, OK. Why on earth would you want to watch that was worth that kind of money? Well, I am not uh, spending anything like that, just really? so people don't think that I'm uh, extravagantly bombastic with uh, whatever funds I have. Yeah. I will not be um, purchasing a watch for that amount of money. It would be ludicrous in this day and age... It would be. Uh, ...to go around spending that sort of money on a watch, and uh, I decry it. Yes, quite right, too. Uh, yeah. Patrick says, Porky's getting worse on the one-minute moan. Hashtag El Planco. Uh, MG, just sit back and put your feet up. Yeah, uh, again, you win hands no, down. No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, these are all like this. Daniel, Porky's just yeah. done the worst one-minute moan in living history. No, I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> it's, uh, it's You know, when you, when you pay for a service, you should get that service. You shouldn't get some half, you know... Uh, uh, half interested, what? half interested sort of, um, you know, approach to you going out and doing your purchasing. OK. Mm. Now, how about this? You know, we're all going away on holiday soon, yes. right? You may or may not be going somewhere. I'm not quite sure. Hey, Have I've got seen, a fantastic uh... thing to tell you. I'm well, awfully sorry. Well, I've yeah. got something to tell yeah, you. Go on, yeah, have you seen yeah. what they've done at Newcastle Airport? Uh, no, what have they done? They've opened a kebab shop so that people can get uh, kebabs basically all year round. Really? Uh, and all day and all night, they can get Donna meat and chips and mm. take it on flights. Really? This is a great idea, isn't it? Why? What do you mean, why? Well, I, the one thing I can't stand on public transport is people bringing on hot food, yeah. which is pungent, you yes. know, like... Pungent well, unfortunately, more, well, more and more now, if you fly, particularly on budget airlines, yeah. where they charge you for the food, yeah. particularly if it's not a particularly long flight, yeah. people buy their own food and bring it on. Yeah, but hang on. The, from the point of buying yeah. to going through the process of security and ticketing and getting on an aeroplane, that yeah. food would be cold. No, it, of course you don't other. buy it on the other side of airside. You buy it once you've gone through security. Do you? Yes. Well, you're actually, just before you going up the steps onto the plane. Well, what happens is, right, you go through security, which can take a fair amount of time. Yes. But once you get through security, that's where all the bars are, that's where the duty-free is. I see. And there are are food shops more and more. Some people will go to Boots and buy a sandwich. but, But you will still then go to the departure lounge and possibly take 10 minutes to get on the plane, yes? Yeah. Well, what, what happens to the food? It goes cold, doesn't no, it? No, you get, if you get a kebab, right, Yeah. and you put it in a polystyrene case, which yes. is how you get it, Yes. Uh, you can sometimes, people will actually take it home and eat it. Yeah. You can take it on a plane so and eat it. So you telling me I could be sitting on a plane yeah. and settling in, you know, to budget flight, and yeah. you're only going to Newcastle or something from yeah. London, so yeah. you, don't want, you don't want a business Well, class you'd be going seat. from Newcastle, actually. Yeah, from Newcastle. that's where it is. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to London, so yeah. I don't want a budget seat. I don't want a, a business seat. Yeah. And then some slob comes and sits down next to me and starts tucking into his... Takes, uh, takes out a bottle of beer and kebab. a kebab with a chilli sauce. Yeah. I'd, I'd ask for him to be thrown <laughs> off the plane. You'd have to. It says here, there's a new outlet of a place called Pitter and Brew yeah. in the departure lounge, yeah. right? You can have, for £6.99, yeah. uh, you can have a kebab with pulled pork, yeah. chicken, yeah. you can have halloumi, yeah. uh, passengers can have their kebabs boxed mm. and they take them aboard their flights. Right. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, you because do. Because why wouldn't you also, I mean, you can take a sandwich on board, yep. no reason not to take hot food on board if you've got the ability to do so, yeah. surely. Yeah. Nine, well. Six ninety-five kebabs are served with salad and coleslaw, mm. topped with tomato, chili, and garlic yeah. sauce. Uh, you can also go naked and have all the fillings without the pitta. Yeah. Uh, they are served from early morning to late at night. Mm. And David Ward, uh, sorry, Dean Ward, commercial manager at Newcastle Airport, yeah. says there has been a huge growth in our catering concepts. Yes. 
catering concept, yes. you like that, at the airport. I think that's the worst development in air transport no. since the invention of the wing. Uh, Honest well, to God. Actually, the wing was quite a good thing, wasn't Honest it? Honest to God. How yeah. is that? The wing surely was no, a good No, no, since the day the wing was invented, yeah. that is the worst development oh, in air travel. Oh, really? Without a shadow of a doubt. They so? t- they're turning budget travel into... Uh, what can I call it? Trash travel. Well, it's have you, trash did you not travel. see that, that group of uh, young, youngish women, I should say, uh, who were uh, having a hen night yeah. uh, or on their way to, where was it? But, but where were they going? They were going to Ibiza or somewhere, weren't they? Mallorca, I think. And they all got and, taken uh, off the plane. They got arrested when they got there, yeah. but then for, unfortunately the local police let them go. But they just made the misery of the journey to everybody else on board yeah. by being loud, well, we're getting more and more of these stories, aren't we? drunken. Yeah. It's not good enough. We're getting more and more of these we, stories we are, yeah. where people who yeah. go on budget airlines think, yeah. It's a license to get completely bladderated Absolutely. And, and make everybody else's life a misery. I totally I'd agree much rather they be sitting down quietly eating a kebab. Yeah, well, I wouldn't because I don't like kebabs on planes. Now, listen, I've got something incredible to tell you. Have you? We all know who Graham Courtney is. We certainly do. He is a top class correspondent. Top class talk correspondent sport. for Talk Sport, In, northeast uh, of England. That's right. He, of course, uh, does many match reports for us, a lot of football and all that. But, of course, he's also a distinguished motoring correspondent. Uh, he certainly has covered several Grand Prix, hasn't he? In addition to that, he uh, has an interest in a wine business. I know that because I wanted to show from Graham's Does house. He? And I was has he got li- any boxes he wants to offer us up? Uh, well, he's got a few in the garage because he? he liberally He's also me covering a- uh, Sunderland Celtic yeah. uh, for us later on today. He, he certainly is. But there's one amazing thing. He heard our story about the Porsche yes. with the registration plate oh, A911. Yeah. Uh-huh. Guess what? He's got it. It's sitting on his driveway no. at this very moment. What, the Porsche? Look. Why? The picture. Because he must be test driving it. I no think, way. For- Porsche, yeah. Well, hang on. Isn't that you incredible? Mo- well, hang on. You had it years ago, right? No, well, what they do is they take the plate off a, a model and put it onto a newer model. Oh, and I they've see. been doing that over the years. Oh, so, so he also gets free cars to drive around, doesn't they're he? They're not free cars. He's a motoring correspondent. He test drives cars, you does know, and then, and then writes very authoritative reports Who's on the... Who's he write for? Well, all sorts of magazines online. I, I don't know. That. I don't know all about his business. Well, I know you ask him? I know. Well, we're going to. Well, I, I suggest we should get him to uh, ring up and tell us in yeah. a few minutes on the show because How that is fantastic that he's got that car. Well, um, it certainly proves that the car um, it just keeps getting retread. I suppose, if you like. No, because... no, no. They take the plate off this year's model and put it on next yeah. year's model, and so on and so on. But isn't that incredible? Mm. We talked about it, and he's got it there on his uh, on his driveway. Two freeloaders together would be my suggestion. I would say two distinguished motoring correspondents yeah. who've uh, shared the. The same wonderful experience. Yeah. Uh, the only difference of a is he's got, a, he's got a picture of his. And you haven't. Yeah, but I must have known about it to have talked about it. Well, in the maybe first it's place. his story. Maybe you've stolen his story. Well, See, this is what happens. Well, I think we'll talk to him and find out. We'll find out, out from, yeah. from, from, from him whether, yeah. in fact, yeah. your story is not true. No, my story is very true. <laughs> and it's now been proven true by Graham Courtney, no. one of the most distinguished no. motoring correspondents. You're now telling Graham Courtney's stories no, for not. him. I'm yes, not. you are. I'm not. We'll ask him if he had a girlfriend called Barbara. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> Talk sport, we are the two mics. Uh, here's one from Continents. It says, Flyby stop you from bringing secure side coffee on board for health and safety reasons, yeah. yet they then offer you hot drinks at high prices on board the plane. Yeah, well, see, that's why a lot of people like to bring mm, stuff on. This could be a marketing ploy, uh, you see. Yeah. Uh, mm. Vision says, I totally agree with Porky. Kebabs on planes, for God's sake, horrible. Exactly. Porky is right. Total trash. Total trash. Um, and here's one from Jason. who says, a beer, a kebab, and a bit of sluttish behaviour. Mm. Sounds great, Porky, for the, <laughs> well, fl- for the flight to, well, to a European was, holiday destination. Uh, there was a time in my life when I'd have actively uh, gone seeking that sort of travel, I'm telling you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Peter says, how about something positive about the Gunners on Talk Sport? Mm. Uh, Arsenal invited 400 service firefighters, etc., free today. Mm. Uh, well, I'm sure that's a very nice thing, and I'm sure the Emirates yeah, yeah. Cup, which is held every year yes. at the Emirates, is a good thing to go to. Of course it is. Yeah. But, I mean, on the other hand, yes. uh, there's not a lot of positives about Arsenal at the no. moment. I no. mean, have they bought anybody that's worth um, a, a fig? Um, is Alexis Sanchez is going to be playing for them in the coming year. Well, that's what they've got to sort out. We don't know, it, do we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, how about David here? It says, Porky, the problem is your woman at Moan is always about you. You never have any substance. Were you listening today, David? Yeah. I, I was doing it on behalf of millions of consumers who yeah. go into a news agent to buy a newspaper and then don't want the guy behind the counter refusing to take the money until he's read the first three stories on the front page. Yeah. That is a service to society and the community in which I live. Yes. Uh, and Jason says he's checking in from Los Angeles last night's blatteration in uh, Akasha in Culver City, mm-hmm. which looks rather nice. A nice bottle of wine, yeah. a couple of glasses. Do you remember your days in Los Angeles? I'm uh, showing you a picture here. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Uh, is that me in Los Angeles? No, it's not you. It's it? a picture of a bottle of wine and two glasses. Yeah, well, that could be anywhere in the world, couldn't it? Well, it could be, but mm. only you would be somebody who would think that you would put out a picture on Twitter that wasn't actually what it purported mm. to be. Yes. Shall we talk to Graham Courtney? We should. The man who's driven the same uh, registration That's as right. you, but not yeah. the same car, Definitely I presume. Uh, Mr Courtney, this is a very bizarre coincidence. I'm worried <laughs> that Porky has, like many other stories, usurped your story and told it as his own. <laughs> Well, and do you know what? Also, one of my mates has a wine bottling company, so I can talk about <laughs> bagging boxes as well if you want to. Brilliant. Well, well, he said you had a wine bottling company. Uh, no, it's my very, very best friend. Oh, well. I yeah. see. Do you uh, know what? Did it's you have a uh, girlfriend called Barbara? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not that I know of, anyway. No, okay. uh, Before the wine got in. But do you know what? At the moment, it's, uh, and I have to say, anybody who's been to a bottling plant, I mm. find the whole thing fascinating. Yes, yeah. And, um, I mean, the average 70 centilitre bottles, mm. he fills... 75,000 of those an hour. Really? An hour? It's unbelievable. God, is this, sorry, is this into... That's almost as quickly as Porky empties them. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> sorry, Graham, is this into bottles or these boxes we've just been talking uh, both. about? Both. It does everything. And does um, Well, he's also started to do um, into... And this is, you know, recycling plastic bottles. Mm. These are PET things. So he's actually starting now to put wine into plastic bottles. And, wow. you know, initially people sort of turned the nose up at it, which I did as well, just yeah. said, wine? Plastic bottles, you can't do that. Okay, if it's on an aeroplane or something, you can understand trying to reduce the weight. But he said it's very, very similar to years and years, and you'll remember when uh, twist top bottles replaced corks in bottles. That's right. And people at the time used to say, "Ah, well, it hasn't got a cork in it; it's rubbish wine." Yes. And you suddenly realise actually, it's just as good, if not better, as well. No, it's it's better. Funnily enough, now it's more inconvenient to get a cork, isn't it? It is, yeah, because nobody's got an opener. We went to a bottling plant in South Africa during the World Cup, and the guy there explained why a twist top is much, much better than a cork. A cork is porous and the twist top's not. Ah, good point. Yeah, it yeah. keeps the oxygen out or something. That's right. That's now, it, yeah. Graeme, tell, yeah. please tell MG about this car. He thinks that I've, you've told me this story in the past and I've nicked it from you, but in no. fact, it is a phenomenon that that car is available to motoring journalists, isn't it? It is. It's on a 911 Carrera, which is actually the entry-level model, so it's not on the very, very top end of the range. Mm. Uh, but, no, it's on, the, it's on their base one that they have, so about seventy-four, seventy-five thousand 75,000 pounds. And also, it's the first car I've ever driven with a seven-speed manual gearbox. Wow. Wow. I mean, loads of cars now. I mean, there's, I was driving a car the other day, the automatic, you know, with the paddles behind the steering wheel? Yes. Yeah. Ten speeds. And it's just, you know, it's going up and Your up mine's and up. got nine. It's ridiculous. I never use the paddles. Though. No, don't I really don't either. No, I mean, they're, they're a bit of a toy to start with. And, yeah. But after a while, you just think, no. I don't know how to use it, it, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> when, when uh, will somebody come and take this car back off you, Graeme? Uh, there's a man arriving on Tuesday. Right, well, there you go. And yeah. meanwhile... It's replaced by a Kia Picanto, by the way. Kia Picanto. But meanwhile, you've been able to flash around the northeast, posing in uh, mm. one of the flashiest cars around, and uh, and it's a nice experience, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's been up the latest trip, actually. Had a couple of days over there, over to Grasmere, so... Uh, yeah. which, you haven't passed uh, any burning Ferraris anywhere near Barnsley. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, you're, you're talking about supercars, and I have to say that some yeah. of them are a bit of a handful. I had the Aston Martin Vanquish S uh, three or four months ago, mm. and like lots of these cars, you've got to be pretty stupid nowadays to do something where you do end up in a field. You've either got to whack a plane in the car going far too fast, right. or uh, you, you just you floor the accelerator at the wrong time, and basically the back end catches up the, th- the yeah. front end. So, yeah. But I mean, they're, they're hugely enjoyable to drive, and I don't know about you guys, but it's the sound you get from an engine, which sadly, in the year 2040, yeah. well, it's, it's coming to replace well, with the a distant bit, hum. This has mm. become a bugbear for myself and Porky, because I'm saying that electric cars are the future. Yeah, well, uh, whether you like it or not, not, and I'm not saying I like it, but yeah. it's the way it is. Well, and he's there's some good hybrids it, as well out there. Well, some yeah, but he's hybrids, telling me that, yeah. oh, it's never going to happen, we're never going to have enough electricity. Yeah. It's unbelievably, yeah. ridiculously backward behaviour. Well, from I don't think so. Graham, last question. Have you ever been to the track in Maranello, the Ferrari track? No, I haven't. No. I haven't. So but, all the Ferrari launches are actually done over here. So the, invariably, they'll, they'll use a racetrack, like Silverstone. So I've done Silverstone in Ferraris and things like oh, that, I but see, I've not been right. over to Italy. So. And do you, would you advise people, if they're first time in a Ferrari, that they should take notice of the fact that there is a, a driving yeah course available to you oh absolutely particularly if you want to make the best of it and do, you know what one of the best things you can do if you've got a performance car yeah. is go to a racetrack mm. you know check the insurance policies and things like that but going along to a racetrack where you've got loads of spin-off space so if you get it wrong you just disappear on the gravel and come back on again yeah that is really really well good that's fun. the thing i mean it's not yeah. much fun driving a lamborghini down hatfields where you've got about 55 speed bumps no, exactly. and cars parts yeah. on both sides of the road i mean i actually exactly. saw a guy scrape a lamborghini oh. uh, in my yeah, street because he was going over a speed bump. Yeah. You floor it. Yeah, oh, it's horrible. Problem, yeah. Just it's horrible. 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 Anyway, I suppose we should one. talk about Sunderland and Celtic, which is a game that's coming up mm. later this afternoon. Yeah. And do you know what? I think from Sunderland's point of view, I, 
the average Sunderland fan, if you spoke to them six or seven weeks ago, uh, they'd more or less, you know, they'd just be looking down at the ground, drawing circles with their foot, more or less thinking mm. this is going to be a horrendous season. But bit by bit, you know, I think Simon Grayson is slowly but surely turning this football club around. He's made some mm. decent signings, and uh, you know, they're not going to be ripping up trees. They're not going to go down. So uh, the vast majority of Sunderland fans, after the chaos they've had over the last few years, mm. if you just simply say to them, do you know what? It's going to be a season of mid-table me- me- mediocrity. They'll go, yep, that'll do for me absolutely fine. So. Right. Um, it, but an interesting one this afternoon. The, the one thing we're going to have to w- wait until, what, 2 o'clock is the sort of side that Brendan Rodgers comes out with with Celtic. Bearing mm. in mind, this game comes slap in the middle of their Champions League qualifying matches. They played one last week, of course, yeah. uh, against Rosenborg, nil-nil. Not surprising for Celtic, they didn't have any strikers. Well, mm. they've got a bit of a striking strikers kind of uh, a desert situation, mm. haven't they? There they have. I mean, you know, he's got to do something about it. I mean, Lee Griffiths, whether he's actually going to get, get ready in time for the game next Wednesday over in Norway, I don't mm. know. But the difference that you saw is that Celtic and the same will be for Sunderland today is that they're still trying to get into their stride whereas uh, Rosenborg who are top of the Norwegian Premier League mm. they are fully into their stride they're halfway through their season so they look much much sharper than Celtic so I tell you what next Wednesday night's going to be a really really tight one for them yeah it certainly is certainly is well Graham mm. thank you very Graham, much thank you indeed. very much indeed of course uh, we'll be talking I'm sure uh, to Graham possibly tomorrow because we've got he's multi-talented he's very he? multi-talented yeah, yeah. Hungarian yeah. Grand Prix tomorrow uh, yeah. we'll Hungarian be here. Grand Prix tomorrow um, Motor Test driving today, you yeah. know, Ferraris, uh, football, Porsches, yeah. Sunderland, wine, Celtic. Celtic. Got a wine bottling I'm plant. telling you, haven't got any yeah, strikers. Uh, how about this from Elliot who says, Listen to you in a taxi in Shanghai. Great show as always. Uh, Cabby's not sure what I've put on. Mm. Yeah, well, don't oh, worry. Very possibly not. It's educative for anybody, mm. don't worry about uh, that. <laughs> Talk Sport, we are the two mics. We will be back, of course, for another warm up tomorrow, mm. uh, Sunday. That's 11 to 2, yep. uh, where we'll have some uh, motor racing action, yes. uh, as we were just describing, yes. with the um, uh, the Hungarian Grand Prix mm. Uh, mm. and much, much more besides. A few people have started sending in pictures of their watches and their watch collections. Oh, yes. Uh, because you've encouraged them to yep. do so. Yeah. Uh, so we might move into some of that a little bit later on. Yeah, we might indeed. But, and, uh, you and know, have a look at that. You know what, by the way, I'll give you an update yeah. on my watch. Because yeah. remember, I told you it strangely started again after stopping. Yeah. Yes. It's now stopped completely. Has it? So I think I must, must need a new battery. So is this the watch you were given by your... Uh, the mother of my children. The mother of your children. Yes. So be very careful what you say about I'm it. I'm not going to say anything bad about it. But really? But you sure it's not a cheap bit of junk? She well, tried no, I've to, had it for a long time. You know, sort of... You know, just no. It's what you call a fashion watch, a Hugo Boss watch. Yeah, she just, bought it, I think, in Glasgow in yeah. about two thousand and uh, two, three, yeah, something like that. Hugo Boss, yeah. Well, so that, that's just an accessory to their fashion chain. It's yeah, not, I know. A, not a proper watch. Well, in anyway. the same way that this watch here is a palm it's it off an, on you as a present. A, no, it's a, well, she bought it for me as a present. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. When she loved me, oh, it's an Armani. Okay. This is. A, I've got an Armani watch here. <laughs> that poses all sorts of questions. Yeah, I've right. got an Armani Go on, watch yeah. here, uh, yeah. which my daughter bought me last year, which you would describe in a similarly, I would say, sort of snobbish way yes. that it's just a fashion watch but it has yeah. great significance to me because yes. it was bought by somebody who, who loves me mm, yeah. you okay. see the trouble is with you is you have yeah. to keep buying your own presents because nobody <laughs> yeah. loves you that's a very harsh it's true listen didn't you once tell me that your uh, distinguished father who yeah. I knew well Archie was a bit of a uh, crossword demon uh, well he did like to do the times crossword which I could never do okay. I found it incredibly difficult ok well listen do you remember an old colleague of ours from New York called Ben McIntyre Ben McIntyre yes yeah, Ben McIntyre yeah. is a guy who would made an absolute fortune mm. you probably know this story mm. right because he wrote a history book yeah. uh, sort of um you know not a particular i don't want to be unkind but not yeah. a particularly thrilling book no about history but it was optioned by steven spielberg mm. yeah. who paid what? about a quarter of a million dollars for it what, to make a film yeah it? but he never made the film no, really? but he got two hundred fifty thousand bucks <laughs> just for agreeing to give it and to what spielberg. sort of history book was it i think it was something about napoleon or it's something an historical novel yeah or? no it was a, it was a, it was a fiction oh, a non-fiction book non-fiction because book. he was a bit of an historian himself brilliant well anyway i remember ben in the bar in um, costello yeah, yeah. and he was sort of losing his hair a bit you know quite young he did but yes he but did yeah. it only went halfway back on his head and then it stopped and that's where it is now so he's never actually gone bald, you know what I mean? Right. One of those but uh, no, he's uh, he's now a, a great writer with the Times, right? Yes. And uh, he's he's written a bit this morning, and he says that in his view, uh, children should be taught how to do crosswords in school. I agree with because that. the ability to do a crossword makes people happier, healthier, brainier, yes. and there is apparently some scientific evidence. Mm. 
but it it uh, it stalls the onset of dementia. Yeah, well, in my father's case, sadly, that's not true no, because no, the uh, dementia not. actually no. advanced even quicker. No. But, so I don't um, know whether we could say that. But he's pointed out here in this piece. You know, he, he says crosswords should not be taught in schools, beginning in nursery. But children should start to learn the difference between a cross and down, cryptic and concise. By GCSE level, all children should be able to set their own crossword. Yeah. Now I've been hopeless at crosswords all my mm. life. For instance, he says here. Children could work out easy clues like G, S, G, E, nine and four. Eh? G. What do you mean? So G. Take the letters G, S, G, E, nine and four. Right. What is that supposed to represent? Well, uh, that's the clue. And what's so? What are the two words? Nine, nine letters and four letters. I don't see. That's why I'm no good at it. No, but I'm going to tell you now. And what is it? uh, Scrambled eggs. What? Scrambled eggs. How is that scrambled eggs? I've no idea. The You've clue... You've got the, the, G, the E and the two Gs, right? Yeah. And then the S that comes between the two Gs. Yeah. How would... I mean, that's eggs, right? I suppose. Well, there's, the, the, there's four... That's eggs, isn't it? Four and letters four. in eggs, and, and, and they're all there, but they're in such a strange uh, sequence. But, why, but where does the nine come in? Well, scrambled. What, nine means scrambled? No, 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 no. The clue is G-S-G-E. Right. And then in brackets, it's always what the what the clue is confirmed right. as. Oh, OK. One word or two words. Oh, I this see. This is two words. One first word, nine, oh, I and see. the second word, four. Scrambled right. eggs. Yeah. See what I mean? See, so you have to have a mind that works in a particular way, well, I think. Well, exactly. See, I used to do... The Evening Standard used to have a picture crossword yeah. for kids. Yes. You know, so there'd be a picture of, say, yeah. a piece of cheese. Yeah. And then the answer was cheese. Yes. I can do that. Yeah, yeah well, that's you about know. my level. I used to, I used to like the one in some publication where it was only there was only about eight clues. Yeah, and they were all three word answers. Yeah. You know what I mean, like ant or yeah. something like but that. But I mean, for him, I remember because I used to watch him sometimes. For him to do the Times crossword, you had to have this kind of knowledge of the yeah. classics. That's right. You yeah. had to have knowledge of all sorts of literature. Yes, you had to have knowledge of what the actual internal. Yeah crossword creator sure. used as, as certain kind of um, message words, yes, you know, that's so right. that it would point you in a particular direction. That's right. But I tried it and I just couldn't do it. I, I just cannot get into crosswords at all. No. Anyway... I prefer uh, Sudoku. Uh, I've never got into that either. Really? Is that about adding up numbers down well, no, and across have, well, all to grid. the same... Yeah, it's a grid system. Yeah. And they have to all add up I to the same number. I once bought a book, because I used mm. to do it in the Times, okay. um, and there was three every day. Yeah. But that became, and uh, I used to do it on the iPad. But and then, then did you get an obsession and wanted to do well, more? Well, yeah, I once went on a transatlantic flight and I bought a book. Right. And I got halfway through the book and then I just chucked it away. Yeah, OK, but it was quite it got riveting. To, because it got to a point where, you, this, you may be learning something about me, because it got to the point where they started to get too hard. Yeah. So I stopped doing it. Yeah, but I mean, that, that was in <laughs> inverse proportion to the amount of alcohol you'd been consuming, <laughs> well, obviously. So you probably couldn't see straight. That's actually not true, because I used to always yeah. have to get off of the other end and tire a car. Oh, right, OK. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the first... You've seen the time. Uh, the, yeah, the crossword compiler who started it all was a guy called Adrian Bell. Oh, yeah. Compiled the first Times crossword on, first, on February the 1st, 1930 which Ben has reprinted, the first clue ever, mm. one across, spread unevenly. And it's five letters. Spread unevenly, one across. Yeah. Five letters. Yeah. See, I couldn't tell you. I'd have to think about that. What about uneven? No, no, that's six letters. No, <laughs> I don't that. think that would be it. Spread unevenly. Spread unevenly. Five Scatter? Let- that's too many letters. No, isn't it? And, it, and it's one across, right at the top of the crossword. I haven't got a clue. Yeah. I, I, I uh, Spread unevenly. Yeah would mean if you spread something unevenly, like butter on bread, yeah. then it's uh, erratic, no? no? No, I don't think no, so. No. Well, that's more than five anyway. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, yeah. John's called in from uh, Delray Beach in Florida, okay. uh, where he was listening earlier, and it's 28 degrees. Where, where's that? Delray Beach? Delray Beach in Florida. 7.30am, uh, 28 yeah. degrees. It's going to get hot there today. It is. It certainly is. Uh, Liam uh, says this, can you talk about yeah. sport, please, you donkeys? Oh, yeah, who's, who's don't Liam? Don't shows for you, Liam. Yeah. Uh, some guy just uh, has just uh, texted in. Well, I was just some random guys texting in because, yeah. uh, you know, you've got to get a grip of things. You have. And yeah. uh, coming up, it's Sam Matterface. He'll talk about a lot more sport than we do. Mm. Uh, Liam, enjoy yourself. Mm. This is Talk Sport. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, the warm-up with the two mics on Talk Sport. da 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 da